Welcome to Watch, Review, Repeat. This is the podcast where two best friends discuss the latest in film and television and then do it all over again the following week. My name is Colton Brown and joining me is Andrew Meadows. How are you, sir? I am doing well. Uh, I I hope you're doing well post-vacation. I am doing uh, I'm doing fair to okay post vacation. You, you got the post vacation blues, probably. You know, That's it. You, you're missing missing that sunshine. Back to work, back to the old grind, that sort of That's thing. It. I'm sure. That's it. Um, you know, uh, vacation was a lot of fun. We did a lot of things um, and uh, partied hard. So, and, you know, in the sense that I I can take a break from partying hard. You know, I, I, that's quite nice. Um, but aside from that, it was a pretty good trip. It was actually a very good trip. I had a very good time. Uh, but uh, back to the grind. So, yeah, I got the blues. Understandable. Uh, I myself am uh, heading out on vacation very soon. Uh, heading up to Vermont for, I believe, the first time in my life. Vermont's uh, a beautiful state, man. You're lucky. I, I Yeah, I, I, I am looking forward to it greatly. Obviously, it's a... Uh, COVID-19 vacation, so I'll be keeping to myself more, Anna and I will be keeping to ourselves more or less, uh, and uh, so so it'll, it'll be nice, but, you know, she wants to show me so many things, and there's just so many restrictions, unfortunately, that we, uh, I won't be able to, to, to experience it fully, but um, it'll be nice to, to have a little bit of a break uh, and, and then go back to reality, um, but uh, I'll enjoy the break while I can. But basically, uh, this is kind of an unplanned episode. Uh, as it turns out, I believe at the tail end of our last episode, we said we'd take a week off, and lo and behold, that Here was we are. Shit. <laughs> uh, surprise, surprise. Andrew got back from vacation a little sooner than I realized. Um, I asked him if he was interested in, in, in doing a little bit of a of Comic-Con episode uh, in a way. Uh, and he said, yes, so here we are. Uh, and and I'm, I, we're basically kind of doing this uh, for, for a multitude of reasons. Uh, first of which is I'm going to be gone for a week and I don't know that I'll be in a place where I can record uh, effectively. So uh, instead of taking two weeks off, uh, we figured we, we would go ahead and plug the gap here. Um, but Comic-Con did happen. There's been a lot of news outside of Comic-Con. Uh, and then there's there's been this Comic-Con that has happened. Now, it's not the usual San Diego Comic-Con, uh, I believe. Many episodes ago, we talked about how the proper in-person big gathering of people has been canceled uh and had been canceled uh and and it is still canceled but um the organizers over at the sdcc basically decided to put together an online uh version of comic-con with uh you know panels on youtube and stuff like that obviously not not the not the same thing um and uh, we'll, we'll kind of talk about basically how that went down in, in a little while but uh we, we felt it was a good enough excuse to to, to have an episode uh, chat about some things. Andrew's going to talk about his vacation a little bit later. I'm very, very excited to hear about uh, what went down on that. He's he's given me a little tease. I will I will admit before we started recording, <laughs> yeah. and and I, I think the listeners are going to they're going to want to stay tuned to what this man has to say. <laughs> I've uh, seen in, in his things uh, and his exploits uh, on vacation. Um, so it's going to be a news episode. Um, uh, that's pretty much just going to be it. Uh, we haven't watched any of Cursed. At least I haven't watched any of Cursed. I'm not sure if we'll get a chance to cover it. Um, Andrew wants to do some King Arthur shit, so it's definitely something that uh, we're still tinkering with, but uh, it's, it's just going to be a news kind of episode. We're just we're just hanging out, shooting the shit, and that's okay. And that's Unfortunately, okay. Unfortunately, yeah, it's, it's totally fine. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of excited about it. We haven't done one of these in, in a while, I don't think. Maybe perhaps since the last Comic-Con, the, the actual proper Comic-Con of 2019. Um, Maybe I'm forgetting about something. I guess we do the best of episodes with the end of the year, and so those are kind of a little bit more of a departure from our usual format. But alas, uh, we are here, and, and, and it is just fine. Um, but but due to the very nature of this episode, there will not be any fun facts for our listeners. I, I'm sure everyone is very devastated, um, <laughs> but they will just have to wait. We'll just have to wait for uh, a future episode for some more fun facts, courtesy of one Andrew Meadows. So let's get into the the news news. This is outside of the scope of San Diego Comic-Con at home. Uh, this is just, you know, the, the, the stuff that happens on the regular. Uh, and we've had a lot of delays in the wake of COVID-19 continuing to wreak havoc across the nation, um, mostly because 
we as a nation have decided to pretend that the the, the virus does not exist. Um, and it turns out that is not an effective strategy. It's not. Uh, and, and has not been an effective strategy for months. For, it's, um, it's effective but, for uh, Florida. Our solution to that is we will continue to do the exact same thing and somehow be miraculously surprised when the death toll hits 200,000 eventually. Um, it's a shitty I thing. I make light of it, out. but it's it's seriously just like, it's honestly insane. If I take too much of a step back, I will drive myself insane thinking about how the fuck we got in this position. So I have to I have to throw a bit of dark humor at it to, to kind of live with it, I guess. I, I, I it's It's honestly insane. With the benefit of hindsight in a few years, assuming the nation does in fact exist in a few years, we will look back at 2020 and think, holy fucking shit, what the fuck? Anyway, moving along, uh, COVID-19, as I mentioned, still wreaking havoc in, in more ways than one. And, and it, of course, is wreaking havoc on the front of theaters opening, reopening, films coming out, etc. It's the same old story we've been talking about for, for literally months now. And and the story largely remains unchanged. Uh, although this, this first piece of news does add a new wrinkle to it. Um, so Tenet, it was announced maybe a week and a half ago, delayed indefinitely. Um, and, you know, WB had been content to just push it back two weeks and then two weeks, and it was just like, are they just going to keep doing this? Every, like, nothing's, <laughs> like, again, nothing's changing. There's been no change in response. So it's like, if it's not safe for theaters to reopen in two weeks, it's not going to be safe for th- theaters to reopen in a month. You know, like, there's no fundamental difference. It's either you're going to do it or you're not going to do it. So just take a stance, I guess, at this point. Right. Um, so Tenet was, at the time, indefinitely delayed. Uh, and, and and that is until uh, just, just yesterday, in fact, from when we're recording. Uh, when we received word that Tenet will be debuting in August overseas, <laughs> not in the United States. Punishment um, for our deeds and our carelessness. It, basically, every, every, <laughs> every country besides the United States, maybe not every country, but most countries uh, in, besides the United States have mounted a response to the coronavirus that has been largely effective and, and not 100%, you know, like everything's good, everything's fine here, but... They have been a far stricter with measures, and they've seen better results. It's probably Imagine been that. shittier for people in the interim. Um, more restrictions on liberty and stuff like that. We don't tolerate that that shit in this nation, evidently. Um, but uh, <laughs> the end result of that is that Tenet is going to launch in theaters at the end of August in seventy overseas territories, which includes Australia, Canada, China. our neighbors to the north. Uh, France, Germany, Italy, Japan, Korea, Russia, and the United Kingdom. Even Russia's getting it. Um, and the United States is going to be playing tenant in select cities starting September 3rd. Now, I'm just assuming that means it will be playing in Florida and Georgia and Arizona <laughs> and Texas. Um, the South. Fuck yeah. I, <laughs> that's my assumption. <laughs> so I'm thinking you'll probably actually be able to see Tenet starting in September. I don't know that for a fact. <laughs> uh, and I'm thinking I will be uh, unable to see it, uh, except perhaps in a drive-in setting, which I know we've talked about is not the way I want to see Tenet, let's be honest. <laughs> so this is obviously a pretty big move. Um I think uh, the the old uh, the Train to Busan sequel Peninsula opened up in Korea. I think uh, a week or two ago, uh, and made like twenty million dollars in Korea, which was very good. And you know, like basically, like everywhere is starved for content. You know, and and the other countries are in a position where maybe it's a little safer to open the doors for the theaters. I don't know if it's still necessarily the best idea. I'm not going to say that on the record, but they're certainly in a better position than than we are. Uh, as Americans. And so I guess, you know, if you're WB and you think, hey, we spent $200 million on this thing, we've delayed it three, four times, whatever, um, you know, we've, it, it's just a shit show. And we, we want to at least get some, you know, recuperation back uh, in, in this major investment. And fine, we'll just, we'll just, we'll just put it out there. And I think honestly, like in terms of the United States, like, just like a slow rollout is fine. Because like, I don't think that this necessarily sets up a chain of events where like once Tenet opens, like I think originally it was in, like anticipated like Tenet opens and then Mulan's the next week and then, you know, things just start piling in one after the other. And I think just with the way that things have fallen, like like Tenet could probably just be in theaters for like seven months. You know what I mean? <laughs> 
Surely not. Like Tenet, Surely. Tenet, Tenet could just sit in theaters, I think, for for a long time. Like, even if it does come out on, like, 4K, Blu-ray, and stuff like that, like, theaters are still going to need, like, product. And and so, like, until, like, there's, like, a real stabilization of scheduling, and as we're going to talk about with the next piece of news, as of now, there there isn't that. So the question so becomes... Kind of the question, yeah, yeah. Do, does... Okay, so Tenet opens up select theaters in the US. WB right. is now setting the president to release films in cinemas. Yes. Do you allow as 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 Disney as Paramount as whatever your other companies are, do you allow WB to solely take all that market share with whatever they're releasing cuz if WB's releasing Tenant, presumably they're going to release another movie they they make. Well, I th- I think it's a wait and see approach. You see what the market share is. If tenants making fifteen million dollars in a weekend, then, then you fuck say, you, yeah. we're coming in. <laughs> no, I think it's the opposite. If it's making a hundred million dollars in a weekend, then you say, oh fuck, people people want movies. But if they're opening up in three hundred theaters across the nation, there's just no room to make money. And so, you know, you could be splitting a market share of fifteen million dollars. But right. if you're, you know, you're Mulan, right, 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 hundreds right. of millions of dollars, like you know, the amount of money that it's going to cost to get the movie you know get the product into theaters Are you potentially losing money by releasing it in such a small like, yeah and, and, and of course they're losing money by just sitting on their shit and not not making any money whatsoever so i guess at some point the argument just becomes well how do we make money on this and streaming is an obvious answer as has been the case with right several movies that have come out things that have shifted from you know theatrical releases to streaming or things that have been purchased by netflix and, and their ilk so you know I, I, there's no great answer to any of this, and 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 WB doesn't have the answer. Obviously, they're just at the, at this point. I think they're just saying, you know what? Let's let's roll it out, out overseas, and we'll we'll try to get it in the states as soon as possible. Because obviously, we don't we don't want a huge huge gap between its international release and its American debut. Given that it's an American film, traditionally it's pretty close to day and date between the two. You know, two like Hollywood is still the biggest source of revenue for. Hollywood movies like sure absolutely you could you could debut exclusively internationally and you're you're just not going to make as much money you're not going to turn a profit like you're gonna you're gonna make some money back which is to say that you're going to be making money but it's not going to offset you know what you're losing yeah you know by by not being able you to, don't want to wanna not open the, up in the U.S. market, market the you United need States. to open up in the market Correct. right at some point you have to uh and so September 3rd is currently their answer. And and, and I, I could see this one sticking because if they're calling it select cities, that means it's not going to be in L.A. It's not going to be in New York. It's it's going to be in Tampa. It's going to be in Orlando. It's going to be in Miami. Maybe. Maybe not Miami. I don't know. I think they're a little stricter down there, at least intending to be. So Atlanta, you know, like those are the kind of places where I could see this playing. Um, Phoenix. Phoenix don't give a fuck. Um, so, <laughs> you know, I think that's kind of what Tennessee. Ten, I'm sure it'll be everywhere in Tennessee. <laughs> so it's not going to be in your major, major markets, I don't think, in the United States, at least not initially. But, you know, if come October, come November, those markets start to reopen, well, Tenet will have only been in theaters for a month or a month and a half at that right. point, in which case there's no real harm because, they, you know, other studios will have a, haven't had that opportunity to see what a tenant is doing in that limited capacity. If it's not doing shit, they're not going to rush their shit out either. And if it is doing great, then, then Tenet, was still it still rolled in the dough from the get-go by being the first one so right it's an okay position to be in it's a difficult position to be in but you kind of understand i guess the mentality of hey we got to get our thing out there and see what happens it's one of those things we'll too, figure it you out. know i mean because wb releases something i mean it takes multiple chains of of things for bad things to happen right so yeah. wb says we made a movie does somebody want to put it out? And AMC says, yeah, we'll put it in the theaters. And so they open up their theaters, and because the government says theaters are allowed to be open, AMC says, okay. And then people yeah. they, they say, we'll sell you a ticket. Do you want to buy a ticket or do you want to stay home? And then people say, I'll fucking buy a ticket. So, I mean, there's there's not, there, you know, if somebody wants to point the finger at WB, you should not release your movie. There's a lot of things that I mean there's a lot of stops that could have happened between here and there. You know what I mean? So Yeah, and and you know, you can turn the argument around on AMC of saying, why are you the one that is allowing this to happen? Right. And you you look at AMC and they say, we are not going to be in business if yeah. we don't if we don't do something now, you know, and 
oh, boo-hoo, you know, a, a billion-dollar company is going to, you know, go bankrupt, et cetera. But, you know, we like seeing theaters, and, you know, AMC is, the largest has, has done pretty good chain. by us, uh, you know, with A-list and stuff. And, yes, they have a massive presence across the country. And so, you know, you want I, – I want theaters to, to, to come back to a normal – state at some point in the future it doesn't mean that i'm rushing out to see tenant and imax and amc day one on september 3rd if they happen to open near me I, I i don't think i'll do that but i still hope that there's a future where come next year 2021 post vaccine world knock on wood that amc still fucking exists you know you don't like, want to see uh, you know, AMC go down I mean, yeah, short of so. AMC going down and selling out and a bunch of theater chains opening back up and then you have like you know, 1999 okay. fucking theaters where you got 14 different theater chains, which, I mean, I guess that's good too, but sure, I just want it's, a fucking yeah, movie it, theater. I just want to go to a fucking movie I, theater and watch a movie. My loyalty is not to AMC specifically. It's my loyalty the is to the fact that I want the theater experience to be maintained. A. AMC right now is the one that has has the Dolby Digital set up. They're the only ones that have that. They have their prime ex- you know, contracts so with called IMAX. Exhibitionists? You know? That's what they are, right? Exhibitionists? Yeah. 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 And so so I, I you know, for e- even if they are the big bad conglomerate of, you know, movie theater companies, like it's fine, you know, like they they, they put put they put good product out. Their popcorn and drinks are way too fucking expensive, don't get me wrong. <laughs> but, but they got nice screens. And, but yeah, you know. So anyway, uh, I guess we should probably g- move get, on to get the, the next train news. rolling here. Uh and, and, and look at kind of what else has happened? So, so the news about Tenet taking that, that's very recent. Some of these other things I'm going to talk about in terms of delays are things that happened after Tenet was moved indefinitely. So these are things that may shift around again as a result of Tenet taking that September spot. We'll see what happens, I guess. So Disney um, took Mulan off the theatrical release calendar. Uh, it was set to hit theaters August 21st, which I think would have been just a week after Tenet's original August date. Uh, and Disney says, nope, no thanks, pulling it off. Uh, as of now, no date set for Mulan. I, I've heard rumblings that they're considering it for Disney+, Plus, which again, at a certain point, you know, uh, the straw breaks the camel's back and you got to do something with your thing. And Disney+, Plus, as, as they saw with Hamilton, can bring in many, many people. And maybe Mulan doesn't quite have the reach that a Hamilton does, but it's certainly going to have some reach. So... So that's something that obviously they could, you know, think about doing. Um, or they can just ride it out, ride the storm out and see what happens. But uh, right now we don't know what is going to happen with uh, Mulan. It's just completely in limbo right now. Uh, but Disney did make some other pretty major moves in terms of release dates. Uh, all Avatar sequels and all scheduled Star Wars films have e- each been delayed by a full year, uh, more or less. <sighs> Um, Avatar 2 going to 2022, Avatar 3 to 2024, Avatar f- 4 to 2026, and Avatar 5 from 20 to 2028. 20, 2028. I'm not making these dates up, I promise. Good <laughs> Lord. And I'm not making up the fact that there's five Avatar sequels. I know we've talked about or four Avatar sequels, five total. I know we've talked about it. Why? James Cameron is a madman. I guess I guess in, in, in Jimmy we trust. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but the Star Wars movies, uh, I mean, this isn't really surprising because, like, we don't even know what the fuck the next Star Wars movie is. Like, we know Taika's doing one. We know... I, I think that's all we know. Uh, Ryan Johnson's going to do one at some point or a trilogy or something at some point, but he's, he's doing Knives Out sequels. So who the hell knows what's going on with Star Wars at this point? So there was one dated for 2022 and that has been moved to 2023. And there's been two others dated for 2025 and 2027. So basically starting uh, in basically Christmas time of 2022, you can expect Avatar and Star Wars to alternate every holiday season. That was always going to be the case. It was just going to be a year sooner, but now it now I got starts you. in 2022. Okay. But 2023 for the next Star Wars film makes sense because that's a long time away. And again, they basically had made no overtures in terms of like, we're really close to having something ready. I, I think for the foreseeable future in terms of the Star Wars films is not a whole lot going on on that front, but we'll see a lot of Disney Plus shows, I think. I think that'll probably be the... The pipeline, the Star Wars pipeline. And we Wars want the Star for, Wars for the, Plus for, shows. For, for now. I, I think so, too. Think we so might too. even talk about one that 
may or may not be happening uh, in just a little while. So as a result of all those Disney delays, uh, Sony has decided to push Spider-Man Far From Home's sequel, uh, Spider-Man Staying at Home because of a global pandemic, uh, to December 17th of 2021, which was the original date of Avatar 2. So uh, Spider-Man 3, uh, not that one, the, the new Spider-Man 3, uh, will be uh, a Christmas movie, um, or at least releasing around Christmas time of 2021. So that's very exciting. Uh, we look forward to some more Spider-Man. Uh, and last but not least, uh, Paramount says, fuck 2020. 2021 is where it's at, yo. Uh, a <laughs> We're quiet moving place part- <laughs> all the things to fucking 21. <laughs> Correct. A Quiet Place Part 2 pushed to April 23rd of 2021. So that's basically a full year delay from when it was originally. It was supposed to come out in March earlier this year, believe it or not. Uh, and uh, and Top Gun Maverick, our, 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 our cruise missile, will, will not be soaring into cinemas until July 2nd of 2021. Oh boy! Uh, so, so that was originally set for this Christmas, more or less, and then it's now been bumped again to to next July. So it's a summer movie again, but a next year summer, later, month, a summer of yeah. a year later. Yeah. So, um, you know, unfortunate delays, obviously, but certainly understandable. I, I, you know, it's crazy because like when Bond first moved in the first place, like that's in November, and that seems precarious now. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's still a few months away. But I remember again, that. I remember how pissed I was when they took it from. I, I remember when it came out, and we're just like, ah, whatever. Ah, you know, ah, they just, they just, you know, whatever. It's fine. You know, things are bad overseas, but nothing's going on here. So it's just about the international market. And now it's literally almost the opposite scenario. It's just insane. <laughs> Bond will probably, Bond will probably open overseas in November. Here, who the fuck knows? Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, oh, I just, I remember terrible. that. Uh, and, and, and so like when Fast and Furious moved, it was like April of this year and they just bumped it a full year. And I remember at the time being like, well, that seems like an overreaction. Nope. Seems very prescient right now of just saying like, no, they, they, they just, were just like, we're steering clear of this shit. You know, you, you gotta look as, as pessimistic as they maybe have been about our nation's response to this. You gotta hope there's a vaccine in place and hopefully in the process of being distributed by next april you you gotta oh, you gotta hope for that you've got of course of course it. there is that's, that's nine months away there's a lot of snow speaking for the covid19 fucking strain you know what i mean who's to say it doesn't mutate but uh look we don't we don't need to get into that fucking uh line of thinking right now we're trying to be optimistic <laughs> for, for a brief stretch of this podcast but yeah they're gonna they're of course they are I mean, we can put we can put man on the mar man on the Mars on the Mars. We can put them. Uh, mm-hmm. We can mm-hmm. we can we can we haven't put them there yet. We put man on the moon, you know. But we can solve anyway. this shit. We can fucking fix it. Have you seen Contagion? I have. We we've, we've we talked about Contagion. We you fucking know, we, fixed we, it, dude. We we, we we talked about some things. Yeah, yeah. If we, we fixed we it there. It. We can fix the fucking COVID. Well, there's a few that are literally in the testing phase right now, so you got to hope that one of them sticks. I mean, might there's, cause there's autism though. Many. Well, <laughs> you know what? The anti-vaxxers will have to live. They'll have to live. <laughs> they'll live because um, people get their fucking vaccines. And then no, that's <laughs> exactly. But but then they'll then they'll feel self righteous because oh, we we solved everything. No, you didn't. You're a fucking idiot. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> shutting the door on that fucking that fucking conversation right there uh we're gonna move on into some news news uh, outside of the delays uh and pick back up with something i i guess i just mentioned not too long ago uh a rumored disney plus original series set Ooh. within the star wars universe uh this is purely a rumor uh we, we i try not to include rumors too too much in our in our news because they often turn out to be nothing, uh, smoke and mirrors uh, off times. And this one was just kind of too good to pass up. And there might be some credence to it because um, this is coming from Kessel Run Transmissions podcast, Star Wars focused uh, podcast. They broke the news a few weeks ahead of the official announcement that there would be uh, the the Bad Batch animated TV show coming yeah, to yeah, Disney+. Yeah, yeah. Plus. Lo and, and behold. so we're... we're, we're 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 kind of going off the knowledge that they they had that scoop, and so maybe they've got a new scoop for us, and maybe maybe maybe, maybe there's a little you know, maybe there's a little fire here, you know, there's, there's some smoke, maybe there's actually some fire to this. So the word, uh, courtesy of these folks, is that Donald Glover is going to come back and play Lando Calrissian for a new Disney Plus original series. Nice. 
And I think this sounds excellent because Donald Glover was a great Lando. He was. Solo was Solo was not getting a sequel, <laughs> a proper, you know, film sequel. And it I don't think it needs one. And I've always been a huge proponent of continuing the plot lines of that through other characters. Whether it's Lando getting his own movie, whether it's Maul even getting his own movie, or yeah. You know, something along those lines just kind of have like a connected storyline, even if it, even if, you know, your Han Solo pops in for a scene or or isn't involved at all, potentially. And so I think a Lando series makes a ton of sense. Now, if they can get Donald Glover to come back, he's obviously... He takes over a whole goddamn planet. Lando's like the, like yeah. the, the whole governor of Bespin. There's a whole story there to be told. Yeah, there's, there's a, obviously a, a lot of... It can end I mean, the honestly, same way. Like, it could end the same way. It could in the same way that Rogue One ended or started, I guess. It, no, no, ended the way it ended with um, or just like transitions, like right into something. Is that what you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So kind of a little bit it, loosely anyways, where it ends with Darth Vader coming. Well, I guess it couldn't end that way because fuck. I mean, he looks completely different at that point. I guess he's a little it would be older. a little. Yeah, you'd have to have to <laughs> either have Billy D come back and, and de-age him for a bit and hope it doesn't look too wonky or something like that. I think if you're sticking with Donald Glover, you got to stick with the pre early stuff, the, the original trilogy. You know, type Lando because you can accept that he looks Younger. like Donald Glover, right? You know, during that time period. Um, so you, you know, I, I and I'm fine with that. I mean, they they like Solo set up this whole idea of a huge crime syndicate led by Maul, and I know that like there's other ways that they could resolve that, but it clearly felt like they wanted to do more with that. And if Lando was a way to tie that in and have him have his own thing, like I'm all for it. You know. I, I I saw something. I can't remember what the source of this was, but people were. There was one particular source that was saying that Billy D. Williams himself was supposed to be involved in some other project uh, for Star Wars too. And so, like, you could honestly just have him and Donald Glover in the same series. You know, where it's yeah, totally you know, Rise of Skywalker era, older Billy D. playing an older Lando and a younger Lando flashbacks back and forth, something like that. I think would be great. Lando is a great character, and it's not that we need. You know, a series for every character in the history of everything of Star Wars, but like Lando, if you're gonna get if you're gonna give a series to someone, give one to fucking Lando. Of course, like hell yeah, who doesn't want that? Everybody loves Lando, right? I'm pretty I mean, sure everyone wanted a Lando movie before we actually wanted a Solo movie, and, and obviously we got the Solo movie, and and I like Solo, but Land it was you know, Lando <laughs> Lando's was just fucking Lando was just smooth was just talking a fucking dude, cool man. Yeah, you know. How could you say no to that? And Donald Glover made a fantastic, fantastic fucking Lando. Yeah, really, really good. So I, I hope that we... It's such a talented I that we dude. See. I like to see Donald Glover in more of a lot of things. Donald Glover's a ridiculously talented dude. Absolutely. So hopefully we'll see him in a Lando Disney Plus show. If it ever gets officially confirmed or deconfirmed, I guess, then we'll we'll we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it. Um. Uh, in terms of other prequel series, uh, I've got an interesting one here. Netflix has announced The Witcher Blood Origin, a limited live-action series from The Witcher universe. Six parts, set to be a prequel to the events of Season 1 of The Witcher. Uh, it's set in an elven world 1,200 years before the events of oh, that boy. first season. Charting the origins of the very first Witcher and the events that led to the pivotal, quote-unquote, conjunction of the spheres uh, when the worlds of monsters, men, and elves merged to become one. Okay, so, well, that sounds pretty fucking um, cool. I can't get... <laughs> a, a, lot of, a lot of the crew from the first, uh, from, the, from the regular Netflix show, it seems like they're involved in this. Uh, and, you know, if, like, it sounds like six parts, you got an idea, go for it. I, I'm kind of I'm kind of down with that, you know, and and we obviously had an episode on The Witcher talked our talked about it pretty extensively, and I think I'm sure we talked about it. I can't recall specifically, but the world of The Witcher is fucking cool. It is cool. It's very cool. And so if you're going to explore that, I'm down, you know. And and this is so far removed in terms of timeline that like it's a different fucking show. Yeah. Right. Exactly. It's like. I think we've I think we've talked about with Game of Thrones it's just like you could do a Game of Thrones show that basically is so far removed from the events of that actual series that it would be kind of cool. Yeah. Um, 
now granted we're just getting a story of targaryens because we haven't seen that before in terms of game of thrones but <laughs> um <laughs> but this this sounds you know hey, there's granted there's a witcher in here and of course there's a witcher in a show called the witcher but you know i'm sure he's a little bit different than than Geralt. the uh, first witcher guess, yeah but... he had to figure all that shit out he took him you like he drank some shit trying to fight a monster and it happened to work Maybe, you know, maybe that's the way yeah. to go. I mean, who, and, who I, knows? and I, and I kind of feel like, I don't know if this would, I don't know if this would happen later in the timeline, but you know, in, in, at the time that the Witcher season one happens, like the elves are like basically off to the side, like ostracized by humans and hunted by humans. I think like humans have like dominated the world. Yeah. Like men have dominated the world. After the, elves are the just conjuncture like, of the spheres. Right. And so like, I don't know if this deals with like, you know, kind of, you know, basically kind of hits on racism in a way of just being like men and elves clearly coming into conflict with each other despite basically being the same except one has pointy ears and one doesn't you know so so i think that's something that they could touch on six parts i don't know how much depth you can really offer with that but at the same time uh it's kind of a neat idea it is um, a neat idea so I'm, I'm curious about this you know i think i'm usually apprehensive about like let's do 17 shows set in the same type thing it, with you know with some exceptions you know it, it, i guess it's a little bit different with something like the cw verse where you know it's based off of pre-established you know right. independent characters and so it's not quite the same as like it's more the fact that they're crossing over is the exciting thing whereas they're usually pretty distinct entities this is clearly coming from one particular set of stories and branching out from there but at the same time i, I i'm i'm cool with it so next piece of news, uh, m- m- moving along here, uh, Emmy nominations uh, came out today. Oh, yeah? And uh, I'm not going to go through the full list. It would take way too long. Um, but uh, the the television show that commands the most nominations, HBO's Watchmen, uh, landing, I believe, 26 Emmy nominations in total, which is... Uh, very, very impressive. Well earned, I must say. Uh, but uh, very, very cool to see some recognition for for a fantastic show. One, I again urge you and our listeners to watch at some point if they haven't already. I was late to the party myself, missed the boat on it. You know, in terms of when it actually came out, caught up later, and so uh, there's nothing wrong with doing that. I say. Um, so it's nice to see some recognition there. Uh, Netflix, in terms of networks, scored uh, 160 nominations in total. Uh, which breaks the record uh, that was set last year. I'm not sure what the record was, but uh, HBO scoring 107 nominations in total. Um, you know, it's just, uh, you know, some some good shows being recognized. Um, some other noteworthy things, The Mandalorian nominated Ooh. for Best Drama uh, alongside shows like Better Call Saul, Handmaid's Tale, Stranger Things, you know, Ozark, you know, kind of your your usual contenders and and then and then you have Mandalorian, you know, a, a new kid on the scene. Uh Watchmen scoring one for best limited series. Uh I know a few actors from Watchmen were nominated, so uh yeah, I I will I'll go ahead and leave it there. Full list is obviously available online. Um I'm sure we'll talk about <laughs> the winners when they're announced uh september Speak- 20th is when the actual ceremony is going to be happening uh what, what are you laughing at over there so i just happened to be scrolling on the facebook when a deadline article popped up it says right. uh brad pitt lands emmy nomination for playing dr anthony mm. fauci 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 <laughs> on snl following oscar I did, win i did see that yep 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 <laughs> Which is uh, which is funny. I'm sure. I'm sure you know uh, the man in the Oval <laughs> Office is thrilled. I'm sure he's just thrilled. It's great. Um, it's the greatest. <laughs> the orange, the orange Cheeto himself is is loving it. I'm sure he's. Eating oh it up. my goodness. <laughs> so uh, we'll we'll save our Emmy talk uh, for uh, for for the winners uh, in September. Um, now uh, we have. Um, uh, a teaser trailer. This is non didn't, didn't debut at Comic Con and actually came out uh, today as well. Uh, a teaser trailer for a new animated series coming to Netflix September eighteenth, called Jurassic World Camp Cretaceous. And uh, Andrew has given me a bit of a grimace. Uh, I know our listeners can't see it. We're still working on the newfangled video technology and, and how to get that to our listeners. To be to be honest, we haven't really looked into it at all. <laughs> we should though. Maybe, my, my maybe one day. Maybe one day. <laughs> <laughs> um, and and do you want to explain to the listeners 
why you would make such a face. Why in don't you just have this. your kids watch fucking Jurassic Park? Man, just have them watch Jurassic Park. I don't. I mean, I just repeated myself again. But I mean, that's. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to watch? Your point is well stated. I don't need. I don't need to. I don't need to rephrase in any way. I've made my point, and I'm going to make it again. God damn it! Yeah, what do you want to watch? This shit. It looks like shit. Uh, uh, this does look like why? Dog shit. Why was this made? Who invested money in this? Why would they invest money in this? I don't know. Like, I mean, the animation looks so low rent in this. It is honestly insane. It looks like ah, there's. It looks like fucking Mickey Mickey Mouse Clubhouse or some shit. You know. Yeah, I mean it's 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 that, but it, like it look just the models. It looks like Toy Story, and I mean Toy Story one. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> yeah, just right. yeah, it, it just looks so low budget and so unnecessary. Uh, yeah, just unnecessary. Of you know, look, this is clearly for kids. There's 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 no two ways about it. But yeah, you know Jurassic Park. Granted, scare the shit out of some kids. Like, there's some intense moments in Jurassic Park. But every, I saw it when I was just a little kid, and I love fucking Jurassic Park, Jurassic Park came out when we were, what, three, maybe? Yeah. Jurassic Jurassic Park was, what, 95? I I don't know if I'm exactly right on that, but it was mid-90s, minimally. So we were kids. And I don't know if we saw it exactly when it came out, but I guarantee we were single digits when we saw that for the first time. Yes, and I I I guarantee you... We were obsessed. With, I, I don't know about you. I was obsessed with fucking dinosaurs. I had a dinosaur book subscription coming in because I watched Jurassic Park. Jurassic Park blew my mind. And and it would not have blown my mind if I would have watched this shit. I promise you that. Oh, yeah. man. Jurassic Park was 93. So I, I would have watched it at home. You know, I, I wouldn't have been old enough to see that in theaters or anything like that. But I'm sure I watched that before. I turned 10. You know what I mean? There's no doubt in my mind about that. So, How does yeah. this even fit in the fucking timeline? I did wonder about that because I'm just like, wait, so they're, they're, they're out of the park again? Apparently this takes place within the timeline of Jurassic World, um, you know, because they kind of escape uh, containment midway through that movie. So, you know, it's, a, it's something within that. However, you know, all, all the negative things we've just said, it's entirely possible this is still better than Jurassic World 2. <laughs> I'm I'm just putting the possibility out there of just saying, you know what? You could do you you could you could maybe do worse. You could maybe do worse within this own franchise. So I, I don't, don't know. know. Just watch the fucking Jurassic Park. Anyway, yes, I, I will co sign. Just watch fucking Jurassic <laughs> Park. Just just do it. Like seriously. <laughs> Come on. Come on. I guess even just watch the just regular Jurassic World, I guess. I mean it's just Jurassic Park, but worse, but still, you know, it still, still looks better than this. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think we'll be covering it. I think that's probably the bottom line. <laughs> but uh, Jurassic Park, it's universal property and uh, universal pictures and the news. The, a- the AMC universal feud of 2020 has come to a historic end. <laughs> uh, I, I believe we kind of had a, a, a side tangent about it a, a while back of, you know, Universal and AMC having a shit fit with each other because Trolls World Tour did really well on video on demand. And AMC is like, well, we're not showing your shit in theaters ever again. And Universal was just like, yeah, good luck opening theaters again, motherfuckers. <laughs> okay. You know, basically it was kind of, I think, the gist of it. <laughs> and and I think AMC is losing this battle. Um <laughs> Uh, together, they have signed a a, a, a deal uh, that will effectively a deal. Allow we can put that in air quotes. I think a deal, a deal where you know AMC is, has been. We're sorry, we're sorry, Papa. We said some mean <laughs> things earlier. We're sorry. Um, please, I'm sorry, please Daddy. take pity on us. Please take pity. Um, AMC is it's the way uh, I took this too. It's hilarious. All right, so so all right, so let's look at it this way. Universal. Um, Films will go to theaters first. Uh, they will uh, have to have a required three-week window uh, where they're exclusively allowed in the theater. And once that window expires, they will be allowed to premiere on premium video on demand services, which I think you know would be your pay twenty bucks to rent it, twenty-five bucks to buy it, kind of kind of deal. How they did it with Trolls earlier this year, uh, three fucking weeks. 
Three weeks. Okay. That's what AMC gets. AMC <laughs> gets three weeks of a movie before Universal's just like, all right, all this money's, money's coming straight back to us now. We're good. And like, I, I mean, I just think, look, I guess, you know, kind of moving forward a little bit, 2021, like AMC's probably okay. I don't, you know, like, I don't know how viable this really is. Like, you know, I don't, I, I mean, I do wonder, you know, if, if Fast and Furious comes out next April, if Fast and Furious comes out April, you know, first, whatever, you know, for sake of argument, has three weeks, and then, you know, April 22nd, you can buy it on demand. I like, I, I, I wonder, you know, if theaters are just in a completely normal environment, like how much impact that actually has on it. But I think like before things are normal, like, you know, if Tenant happened to be a universal movie, like, oh, we'll just put it in theaters for three weeks and then we'll just set it up on VOD. And like, like clearly, and like in any way where I think COVID still has any effect, this is a huge loss for AMC because people aren't going to be rushing out to theaters. And so when these things come up on VOD, depending on what they are, obviously, you know, if, if, if it's a Trolls World Tour where you're, you know, you have parents starved for content for their kids who are stuck at home because they can't go to school anymore. Although I guess that may not be an issue in the near future if things are going to go the way things seem that they're going to go. I don't know. There's just a lot of things with this. I, I, I mean, I do think the bottom line is that a three week window is barely a window at all. And I don't think that like, it just seems like Universal has just had their way with AMC. Here, <laughs> AMC is just like, like just just say that you signed a deal with us, uh, so we come out looking somewhat okay. Uh, that's you know. exactly it's exactly what it is. You know, like it, it really just like Universal <laughs> absolutely could have just been like, yeah, fuck we you. We don't need you. There's a very real possibility you don't exist without us. So we'll throw you a bone here, but like, don't piss us off again, or you're fucking out on the streets. That's, you know what I mean? That's it. That's a, it's. It's sad. It's a little. I, I pity AMC. Somebody stepped in the line at an AMC on AMC, and you know they're having a hard time, so they lashed out. Uh, much like the people that I have to deal with when with with reviews, you know they're having mm-hmm. a, they're they're mm-hmm. having a hard time. And they lashed out at you, and man, I don't know, but that's exactly what you know. Please, <laughs> please bring your movies yeah. back. And the the you know the funny thing is though is. All of it happened before anybody's got a movie to release. I mean, they have movies to release, yeah. don't get me wrong, but all of it happened before they're yeah. even opening up for movies. You, yeah. You know, so already they're tucking their tail between their legs. You can feel the desperate. You can taste the desperation. Exactly. Exactly. Um, and it's, 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 I mean, but they put themselves in that position to be fair. I mean, I, yeah. Well, it's, it's just so funny because. A few months ago, AMC is just like, <laughs> Universal can suck my dick. And then Universal is like, oh, okay. really? <laughs> just one of those moments, you know, and you just, you just come back around like later, later on, you just come back to it and, and, and you just, you just, you just, you know, just, just feel self-righteous about things and just like, oh, well, I'm, I'm sorry. What was that? What did you say? I, I couldn't hear you clearly. Could you say it one more time for, for, for oh, everyone? Oh, man. <laughs> Imagine if they just said, eh, we won't, no, we don't want to show our movies in your theater anymore. I don't know. It's, AMC stepped out of line. They did. So, I don't know. I don't, I don't feel bad Sorry. for AMC about Universal I don't movies. Either. I don't either. I mean, I was ambivalent, I guess, earlier. I was just being like, eh, whatever, two companies, fine, you know, I like AMC, whatever. And then at this point, it's just. With the, with the with the way things have developed, it's clear that AMC is in a very negoti- a very different negotiating <laughs> position than they once were. I think that's safe to say. Uh, don't think it's a hot take anyway. Um, all right. So before we actually mosey on over to San Diego Comic Con at home, I want to take a little bit of a side trip to a, another um, online convention, comic book convention that happened. Uh, the same weekend as SDCC what? at home called Justice Con. What the fuck is Justice Con? From what I can gather, uh, this was concocted almost exclusively to just be a vehicle for Zack Snyder to talk about himself <laughs> and promote t shirts uh, uh, that he wants to sell. Oh, um, boy. And, y- and you know, people are eating that shit up because cause Zack Snyder's Justice League is around the corner. Don't you know it? Um, so yeah, I don't I don't really know what the hell's going on with Justice Con, but I do know that Zack Snyder talked about 
um, his vision and his new version of Justice League that he is literally doing at this point because because why not? Um, and he first of all said that he will not be using any footage that Joss Whedon shot for Justice League, which like fine, whatever. Um, you know, I guess if you have enough footage on the floor, the cutting room floor, that you can assemble your own four hour monstrosity, then by all means, I guess. Um, but he also uh, showed us another clip, another clip it from from Zack Snyder's Justice League, Justice League the Snyder Cut, uh, as it should be called, but evidently will not be called, uh, in which Superman shows up to talk with uh, one Alfred, but he's showing up looking a little bit different than his usual self. He's he's rocking a black suit in this. Have you have you had a chance to, to take, a, take uh, a peek at this? I actually was looking at it while you were talking. Yeah. So... What's interesting, and I didn't know this. I just, I just, I saw the 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 little clip on Twitter. Apparently, this comes from a deleted scene from Justice League. I guess evidently one that Snyder himself must have shot, in which Cavill is actually wearing the regular Superman suit for this whole sequence, and they've decided to make it paint black. over it. Yeah, they <laughs> painted over it to give him the black suit. Um, which the black suit looks good. I was always a proponent of the black suit being in Justice League. If you're going to resurrect Superman, like that's that was kind of his look from the comics. Um, it is missing one very noticeable uh, thing, uh, at least one noticeable thing about Superman's look from the comics when he was resurrected in that black suit, and that is the fact that he was definitely sporting a mullet in the comic books. And Henry Cavill does not have a mullet here, and I think that's a little disappointing for <laughs> probably everyone. Uh, but uh, he's looking good. S- Superman I- with a mullet? I have to look it up real quick. Mm-hmm. You gotta look it up. He looks real good. Looks real cool. Um, because everyone with a mullet looks real cool, as we all know. It is it is a fact that is indisputable. Um, so yeah, there's really not a whole lot to, to say cool. here. Holy shit, that is a fucking... You're, you're, that is a you see, super you see a seal man mullet? in and of itself. Mm-hmm. Fucking oh! Man. Did you just did you just search for Superman mullet? Like that's your, that's exactly that's quote unquote <laughs> exactly Superman mullet is exactly what I searched for. Hell yeah! And that's, then I'll that's show you. Let me just show right you there. this picture that I that I immediately <laughs> saw here. I'll show you. All right, there you go. <laughs> Uh, perfect. <laughs> it is perfect. perfect. Anyways, um, so uh, anyways, uh, yes. Uh, so anyway, Justice Con <laughs> happened. It's fine. We don't need to. We don't need to dwell on it. Um, let's 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 move on to 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 the main event. San Diego Comic Con at home. Uh, you know, couldn't have the real deal. So you know, instead of just saying that, eh, whatever, come back twenty twenty one. You know, the folks over at SDCC decided to organize this online kind of version of things. And it wasn't exactly a success. Um, I think for a few reasons. I think the marketing for it was non-existent. Um, I don't think most people knew that this happened. Um, I myself was kind of just like, they're having panels about what? When is this? What's What are they doing? Like, And when you kind of like talk, like when we'll talk about kind of the biggest things that came out of it. But like when you look at the biggest things that came out of this compared to previous Comic Cons, you're kind of just been like, "Huh, yeah, that makes <laughs> sense." Um, so Marvel had basically no presence. Uh, DC had no presence. Um, Lucasfilm, Disney had no no presence, and 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 so it's kind of dire straits of term in terms of like what you know, they could really assemble in terms of content, what these panels could really consist of, what they'd be revolving around. They do do it like, they did like a big Star Trek one. I don't think I actually included news about that, but, uh, you know, there's a third season of Discovery coming out. There's some sort of animated Star Trek show coming out. CBS All Access is like Star Trek Central at this point. So fine, whatever, Star right. Trek. For the Trekkies out there, I'm sure there's some exciting news to be found in there. Um but there just really wasn't a lot of interest here. Uh, there's actually an article that Variety posted yesterday called Why Comic-Con at Home Was a Bust. Um, <laughs> and, and I think that probably says it all more or less. Um, but, you know, they looked at data from social media analytics. Uh, tweets that mentioned Comic-Con at Home were down 95%. Holy from shit. From 2019's live convention. So less than 100,000 tweets 
over the entirety of the five days that it lasted compared to almost 2 million tweets last year. Um, uh, tweets about the top 10 TV events were down th- 93%. Tweets about the top five movie panels were down 99%. Holy shit. Um, views on YouTube uh, hovered around 15,000 per panel. Um, it's, you know, not great, you might say. It's more than not what great. they would have gotten without it, though. Right, and 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 I I I I don't mean to put out this information to say like, wow, this fucking sucked. Why did they do this? <laughs> because it's not really about that. Like they made, they tried to make the best of a bad situation. Exactly. Like, like th- there's no universe right now. Well, maybe overseas. I don't know. There's no universe really where a live proper comic con is feasible. It's too many fucking people, too many sweaty people that don't shower and are bad at hygiene already. <laughs> assembling in a large space that is a breeding ground for a virus to just spread ridiculously and 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 yeah of course you'd cancel the biggest fucking comic con in the country like right you have no choice in that and so you know i i think trying to make the best again of a bad situation by putting together what you can because you know they can't force marvel to play ball you know kevin feige might have been planning to come out at hall h and say yeah, here's our fantastic forecast. You know, the, the, Mar- you know, Marvel, Disney, they're not going to do that shit on YouTube, you know, right now. Like, they're going to wait for things to blow over. They're going to wait for things to be normal. And then they're going to get back to what they do best. You know what I mean? Like, at this point, everyone's just kind of, they're heading down in their bunker and they're, and they're holding on for dear life and hoping for the best at this point. Like, I, I think that's where most people are at. I think that's where most even companies are at because they're hurting, you know, and there are ways to make income, but that's, you know, having a panel on YouTube is not really going to generate a lot of income from right. or anything like that. So therefore or, you you're know. not going to advertise that you can't afford to advertise. You're not going to recoup yeah, your it, funds. It's, it's just, it's not, it's not worth the trouble, you know? And, and so to get what they did indeed get, uh, you know, through panels, a lot of pre-recorded panels that, you know, went up on YouTube and stuff like that. You know, there's no, and inter- there's no opportunity for fan interaction or anything like that. You don't, you don't, you don't get to have, you know, random person, and 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 the crowd ask about their favorite moment from 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 filming this one particular episode sixty four years ago, you know, <laughs> and asking Ian McDermott to to speak in Palpatine voice for a minute, you know, you, you won't you won't get that sort of experience from home, but you know they they did their best, and and so it's commendable that they at least made the effort, and and clearly there's been enough that we said, hey, fuck it, let's have an episode around it. So so anyway, I say all that to say, hey, you know, it wasn't ideal. Obviously, nothing's ideal in 2020, but they did something. So, I guess golf clap for the effort, you know, if nothing else. Um, Andrew's doing a golf clap. It's probably not audible because it's such a... It's such a fucking a well perfect executed golf, golf clap. clap. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, so, a lot of trailers here. Um, mostly trailers, in fact. Um, maybe one exception. I think only one p- piece of news news, I think, here. Um, so, let's just roll right into it. Uh, starting at the top, uh, we got a teaser for a new Amazon show coming later this year, fall 2020, called Utopia. Um, I'll read the description. Uh, it's about a minute-long teaser, I think. Uh, when the conspiracy in the elusive comic Utopia is real, a group of young fans come together to embark on a high-stakes, twisted adventure to use what they can uncover to save themselves, each other, and ultimately humanity. Um, you know, not, not a ton of footage to go off of here, but, uh, uh, enough to, to, you know, interest you or not, maybe, I don't know. What do you think? Utopia. Uh, Utopia seems incredibly topical. seems very relevant. Right. This is the one that they talk about, you know, Viruses like scientists goes into a, a pandemic or something like that. Yeah. Um, right. I'm sure that was inserted in there very intentionally to be like, look, Look, you know, but <laughs> it worked, right? John Cusack. Fucking John Cusack. John Cusack. I like Rain John Wilson. Cusack. You don't see him in a mm-hmm. lot. Uh, do I like him in a while. That's right. Uh, do like John Cusack, though, uh, for the record. Um, who else do you get in there? Uh, you got Rain Wilson, Dwight from The Office. You get it's, Dwight yeah. from the fucking office. You also get, is this the one with, uh, no, Truth Seekers is uh, the dude from um, uh, the fucking... <sighs> God damn it! What's that old school movie? We'll talk about it. I think we'll talk um, about it. I think. I think. Yeah, it's um, another Amazon show. So another Amazon show. Yeah, bit. yeah. But John Cusack and uh, viruses and comic book show. 
Uh, it all yeah. seems to go together very well. Uh, it actually, there's, I think, like two maybe trailers in here that kind of gave me goosebumps a little bit. Just on, just kind of maybe got me goosebumps because I'm kind of cold. Um, but yeah, temperature kinda, doesn't you know help it. But yeah, you get it. You know. Sure. Uh, but Utopia seemed like something I'm very excited for. Uh, it looks cool. It does you know, look cool. Again, it, it, very little to go off of here, but enough for me that well made trailer at the very least. Yeah, it, it was it was enough that yeah, like I said, for me, I'm just like yeah, I'm I'm interested. I will I will watch it for a tr- full trailer, and and uh, I'm curious, you know. Timeline permitting, uh, you know, this seems like something that that would be up our alley and something that we could cover. Um, I did I did look this up. This is apparently based off of a British TV show, it's like an American adaptation of a British show, oh. uh, which ran for a couple seasons, from what I've been told. I, I also scrolled down in the YouTube comments, and it's just it's a lot of people being like, "Oh, I knew they were going to ruin this when they adapted it for the American version." I'm like, oh, "I don't know. It looks pretty cool. So maybe maybe the <laughs> British one is incredible." Um, I, I truly don't know. I mean, it's probably entirely possible. It's just very different too. So I don't know. But I thought that was kind of interesting that people were very down on it based on, I guess maybe their pre-existing knowledge. Whereas us Americans coming in uh, with with no knowledge of anything, just the dumbasses that we are, just thinking, "Yeah." Yeah, all right. You know, so. yeah. Came out in 2013. Know. There's two seasons, mm-hmm. uh, yep, yep, yep. and it's on Channel Four. I don't think we get Channel Four in the states. No, I don't think we do. I don't. I don't <laughs> think we get it. Uh, I, 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 like I, I don't even know if there's a way to watch this in America, legally speaking. I guess maybe maybe you could buy it. I don't know. But it's very yellow. Anyway. It looks. Uh, it looks. It, uh, the the British one looks like um, like fucking. Uh, uh, artsy a little bit hmm. yeah, yeah but, well. anyways might be something to look into i don't know maybe 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 something you know we don't have a firm date on the american one right now it's just fall which is pretty vague it's you know quarter of the year fall I'd say so <laughs> you know um so yeah yeah maybe we can do a little bit more digging around the time that we, we we know when it's coming um okay uh moving on uh we have trailer for something we have talked about uh previously uh official trailer number two for bill and ted face the music um there's also a little bit of news on this front but let me ask you about the trailer first uh i think we were pretty high on the last trailer that came out are you still feeling the bill and ted i am what do you think Uh, i'm very high on the bill and ted bill and ted front um you'll notice that i said are you high on it? Because it's a reference to marijuana, and <laughs> Bill and Ted like to smoke the, the marijuana. Mary Jane, yeah, the Mary Jane, yeah. So I hope you appreciated that very subtle joke that I made. Um, <laughs> that pun. <laughs> um, yeah, no, uh, I think uh, Bill and Ted looks really fucking good. Uh, if any, at, if I think, at least right now, at if we need a movie that is supposed to, if there's a song. That is supposed to unite the fucking world. I think 2020 needs that song really bad uh, to just unite the world. So Bill and Ted, I hope, I hope that you come through and and yeah. And so <laughs> <laughs> I, I I fully agree. Uh, I happen to scroll down to the YouTube comments on this one as well. Um, I have a bad <laughs> habit, evidently. And the top comment on this, courtesy of Retro Forger, uh, I, I really enjoyed this. Plot twist. After this movie and that song comes out, the world actually goes back to normal. <laughs> and I was just like, yeah, that is that is correct. That is that is how this works. <laughs> that could be absolutely mind blowing and completely awesome. I, I hope this, that is this the is, case. Bill and Ted looks like fun, looks like dumb fun. It looks like exactly the kind of thing I need in my life. Absolutely. It's the kind of thing we all need in our lives. And I I'm very excited for this. So, so the new news that came out around this, um, it's coming out September 1st. It was originally set for mid-August, and they bumped it again to September 1st. However, they're doing something very cool. Uh, evidently, it's not a universal movie, as, as evidenced by, <laughs> by what I'm about to say. But it is going to be coming to theaters and video on demand simultaneously, September 1st. So everyone will have a way to watch it. So The entire you know, fucking world, if you will. The entire world, if you will. I, uh, yeah, so this is one for me where I'm like, look, I'm, I'm not risking my life to go watch Bill and Ted in theaters. But I sure as fuck right? will stream it. But I sure as fuck will pay $20 to fucking, you know, watch it on September 1st. And I, you know, and I guess to be fair, you've gone in on 
I can think you watched the 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 movie. I I still believe is that is that what it is? Oh um, yeah 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 about the, uh, like the Christian that was, singer that was one. Yeah, yeah, that one. That was one that came out in you know in theaters, and then they just kind of dumped on video on demand. They called it Amazon Cinema or something like that. Amazon. Yeah, yeah, I did that. But I don't. I I haven't. I haven't done that for anything yet. Like pretty much, I'd seen what I wanted to see in terms of the theater stuff. Onward ended up coming up to Disney Plus, so we didn't really need to do that. And, right. You know, scoop. We kind of just didn't go <laughs> on HBO Max now. Actually, um, still don't care. Apparently, it was bad. But this is one where I'm just like, September 1st, like, you know, video on demand, I don't think it's like the greatest model, um, but I, I'll watch this shit. I'll pay 20 bucks to watch this shit. Yeah. Like, and, and, and the, you know, with, and the benefit of just being in my home and feeling safe and secure, like. And watching yeah, something new, is, I'll throw $20 to watch something new. This is like, this is for me, I'm just like, this is where VOD feels perfect. Uh, I don't want to watch Tenet in my home. Like, I would. But I don't want to. Like I want to see that properly. Whereas Bill and Ted, like normal times, I'd be I'd be absolutely a listing the shit out of this movie. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, but sure. With things how they are, Bill and Ted VOD. You know, yeah, yeah. This is it. Like this is this is the, like just to me. It just it just fits the bill. Um, another pun. That one was not intentional for the record. But it fits the bill of just the <laughs> the, the VOD kind of film that I want to see. Um, so I think we have to pencil this into our schedule. We have to cover Bill and Ted and I, I'm going to, I'm going to re I'm going to, I'm going to rewatch the first two. I'm going to have to do it. Ooh. Got to have the full Bill and Ted experience. I think just, just one man's opinion anyway. Where do you get the Bill and Ted's? Are I they think streamable? the first one's on stars and I think the second one you'd probably have to rent from Amazon or something like that, but they're like five bucks to either rent or buy an HD. So no they're, problem. They're not too, too bad. Yeah. So I think we can make that happen. Um, all right. Uh, any other thoughts on uh, Bill and Ted? No. Please, the music looks, looks incredible. Fun. I like the, I like I like the daughters being involved. I didn't. Yeah. Feel, you know, we're in I hell. Feel like, but how are you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're good. Right. <laughs> yeah. I just, I just, it's fun. You know, it's an aged Bill and Ted, and obviously it's an aged Keanu and and Alex Winter. Um, but uh, I, I, I'm excited to 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 revisit that. Well, myself. Um, okay, we're, we're going to go back to that other Amazon show I think you might have been talking about earlier. It's called Truth Seekers, and it, it uh, reunites uh, Nick Frost and Simon Pegg uh, of Shaun of the Dead, Hot Fuzz, World's End, um, Renown, uh, about part-time paranormal investigators that team up to uncover a deadly conspiracy. Uh, coming soon, Amazon, no date on this one coming soon i'm not even sure if that means 2020 to be honest but i guess we'll see um but uh you know clearly clearly a, a strong c- comedic bent to this uh anything that uh, caught your eye uh yeah clockwork orange is uh oh right, uh, right malcolm right. mcdowell uh, malcolm malcolm mcdowell yes i did see him and yeah that's right he's he's the man on the like the the stair, the fucking stair elevator uh, thing yes yes I'm sure there's a name for those. Is there a name for those? There's oh, yeah, there's a those. name for those. I don't know what it is. I don't either. All right. <laughs> uh, but, um, yeah, no, this one is another one that looks really good. Uh, I'm a sucker for, like, paranormal shit. Uh, I'm a sucker for uh, Nick Frost and Simon Pegg. And, Absolutely. Uh, Great I, combo. I, I, cannot beat that combo. No, you can't, you can't really beat it. So, um, yeah, I'm all about it. I'm 100% in. It, it looks fun. I just like the idea of doing, like, a comedic riff on you know these god what 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 channel are these fucking shows um i feel like those are on uh so fun fact uh, a couple years back i got super sick on vacation with my dad we went we were actually in were we in vermont i don't know if we were in vermont or not we may have been west virginia i can't remember it was a skiing trip though and either way i was um i was pretty much bedridden for like the entire trip i was deathly ill um i had the flu or some shit it was terrible it turned into a sinus infection infected my nose my ears i thought i was gonna die like it was bad um either way i spent the entire trip watching paranormal investigators and um rerun uh, like the old school twilight zone like day in day out it's all it was on tv the entire time in my room um and i think that shit's on like truth or something truth tv or um true tv i was gonna gonna say true tv and i was like oh is that the one that has the fucking um 
Like they had one where they go to the uh they have one where they go to the Titanic. The Titanic uh <laughs> Ghost Hunters, is that, is that Yeah, is Ghost that Hunters, that's what it's called. Ghost Hunters. They go to the Titanic uh uh the the fucking museum, Titanic Museum. And there's mm-hmm. little kids like little handprints and they move the toys and stuff. Uh A and E. A and E, okay. Yeah, that's what it is. True TV, I think, is the one with the uh, the Jokers. What's that? What's that show called? Do you know what I'm talking uh, about? Impractical Jokers. Yeah, Impractical Jokers. I feel like that is like they don't air anything else on that. That whatever whatever channel those guys are on, that is literally all they air. Uh, but they um, but they have uh, they got Paranormal Paranormal Lockdown, which is another show on TLC. Right. Um, sure. there, there's all sort sci fi. Sure. I'm sure sci fi has one. Uh, they're, oh, they're, sure. It's a it's a thing. Uh, and yeah, uh, now I, I just I'm I'm looking. There's a there's a whole Wikipedia page called Paranormal Television, and there's a list, <laughs> and it is long as fuck. Holy <laughs> shit, this is insane. That's awesome. Oh my goodness. And so anyway, my point being that like to have like someone that is obviously just making fun of this genre, and and look, and I assume that most people making those shows are just taking the piss and just being like, whatever, it's reality TV. We reality, quote-unquote reality TV. We know what this is. Right. But I think just to to throw a Nick Frost and a Simon Pegg onto this already ludicrous kind of thing, it's just, it's a really fun idea. And and I think that it could work as a really, really funny television show as a result, so I'm excited about it. So, So, yeah. Paranormal television. Did you find? Did you find it? The, the the look at that list. It's insane. My goodness. Look how look how long that list is. I mean, oh, I don't know shit. if they're like loosely including everything that could even be lumped into this potential category. Fucking like unsolved mysteries. Unsolved mysteries. It was a new one on Netflix. Did you see that? I did. did have you, you that, watched any of it? I, I haven't watched any of it. Have you? So I watched two episodes and oh, okay. uh, and I oh dude, I got this. Um, so I, in the first episode, this dude puts this letter out before like they find his body in the like this hotel. Um, and I was, I told Sarah, I said, Sarah, the clues are in the letter. The clues are in the letter. I have to get that letter. I can fucking solve it. Anyways, <laughs> I, I Google it and people were already submitting like leads and stuff for the like connections the that they put together. That shit. <laughs> they got to solve them mysteries, dude. <laughs> solve the mysteries. Anyways, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure if any, uh, mysteries have been solved, but I think that I read somewhere that leads have been generated from the viewership of the show, which is pretty. Well, I think the old edition, like, like they would always have like an update at the end of the thing of just being like, you know, like since this aired, like this has happened, kind of thing. That's so, amazing. Was, That's the coolest yeah. shit, dude. Uh, yeah. Anyways, I kind of got real excited, and then uh, I went to work, and I came back home, and Sarah had watched the entire series. I'm like, oh, fuck. <sighs> Doing you dirty. Wow. <laughs> that was super dirty. I was kind of upset about it for a couple days. Like, I want to watch this, and she's already watched it. God damn. Well, you know, she hasn't solved them yet, so she can watch them with you again. She'll, she'll maybe find some new clues along the way. That's it. Um, um, all right. Uh, moving on to the next piece of news. The Marvel <laughs> tent pole of San Diego Comic-Con at home. <laughs> what did you think it did you think it was Black Widow? Did you think it was the Eternals? Sit the fuck down. It's the new mutants. Come on now. <laughs> Come on down. Uh yeah. It's been delayed you know, for another two years? Uh no. No. Wow. Just the opposite. Uh Disney is firmly committed to a theatrical release for the new mutants <laughs> at this point. And I think there's a multitude of reasons for that. I've used that phrase multiple times in this episode. This is the first time I've drank a little bit more than usual. <laughs> Uh, when recording, side note. Um, so the New Mutants, um, all right, well, let's talk about just what's going on with it in terms of release, then we'll talk about what we got from the panel. Fair enough. Um, it's coming to theaters August 28th. And there was something that l- quote-unquote leaked uh, maybe a week, week, week or so ago that was like an Australian television ad that's, was gonna, that's, that basically said it was going up on Disney Plus uh, in September. And oh, wow. And apparently it was fake, which is interesting because it seemingly contained bits of new footage, which seems very interesting. Odd. Yeah. Um, so a very elaborate and well done fake, if indeed it was fake. Um, 
But this panel happened after that came out. And at the panel, they basically reiterated, yes, this is coming to theaters August 28th. And people, I guess, ended up asking the director of the film, Josh Boone, I, I think on Twitter or something like that, being like, so like, isn't, why doesn't this just come to Disney or Hulu? Like, why, why like, like people are going to see it in theaters. Like, why, why don't you just do that? Why don't you just, why don't you just put it on streaming? So Josh Boone on Twitter uh, said, uh, to, to whoever basically tweeted at him, he basically said that there seems to be some sort of pre-existing contract where uh, I think HBO maybe has the first run rights to uh, to the New Mutants, basically, so that Disney basically just can't dump it on streaming. Like they're legally bound to release it in theaters, so that <laughs> HBO can then stream the damn thing. And, and and granted, obviously, this movie was made well before Disney acquired Fox. Right. It was made sixty three years ago, um, <laughs> and it has been sitting in production. Uh, it's been sitting in a vault somewhere. Uh, for for many many years, okay, maybe not sixty three, but it's been sitting in a vault for 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 literally years now, um, and yeah, so there seems to be some sort of contract weird thing where basically Disney is kind of handcuffed in a way of just being like, I think they would have dumped it on Hulu by now if I guess they really had an option to, but I think I think what we're seeing here is. You know, releasing it in theaters on August 28th is a real bad idea. It's not going to make a lot of money. Granted, it maybe it, maybe it never was going to make a lot of money, but it's sure as shit probably not going to really do a whole lot these days. Although maybe it beats Tenet to the punch. Who knows in those select cities? We'll see. Um, but I think the idea being that Disney doesn't give a fuck at this point. Like, they've already written this mo- this movie off. Like, they're losing whatever they're going to lose on it. They're going to fulfill that contract. Legally speaking, say that we release this in theaters we're done with it. Our hands are clean. We're going to wipe our hands clean of it and, and move along and, and make our own fucking X-Men movies that are nothing to do with it. And movie. if you think about it, it's probably not the best. It's probably not. It's definitely not the worst idea. You got this really, I don't think so. And arguably this, this trailer, I would, I would say it looks like real shit. Um, and I think that, um, releasing it at a time where people are starved, maybe you'll artificially get a better reception than you normally would. Or, Maybe. or everybody just kind of forgets about it, and you know what I mean. It's one of those things that just kind of yeah, gets swept I, I under th- the rug. I, th- I think I think they're, they'd be more than happy for it to just be forgotten and and just move on, so that it's just you know they can put an end to the saga of the New Mutants just getting delayed sixty three times. <laughs> I keep using that number sixty four times. We'll just we'll just 64. for the sake of variety, we'll change it to sixty four. Um, so yeah, I think it's absolutely a case of Disney just saying, we're done with this shit. We're so fucking done with this movie. We wanted nothing to do with it in the first place. We only took it on because we had to, because we just wanted everything else that Fox entailed at the time when we when we bought this company. So fuck you, New Mutants. We'll get rid of you. We'll put you out there, and we're done with your ass. We're done. Um, so they are at least, I guess, doing a bare minimum of saying, eh, well, you know, we're not going to gonna put our real shit up on Comic-Con at home, but we'll put the New Mutants up. <laughs> That's how much they don't like the new mutants. <laughs> um, so we got the first two minutes from the movie, which then transitioned into a new trailer for the movie. Who's that girl's um, dad? I don't know. I feel uh, like he's a really bad fucking actor. He was very bad. <laughs> he was he was extremely bad in these opening two minutes of this movie. <laughs> <laughs> so all right. So here's my take on this, and and you, and you may disagree. I thought the first two minutes of this were real bad. Yeah. And I thought the trailer portion of it is the best that the movie has looked in any of its marketing so far. Like, it just looks like zany over the top insanity with demon bear and, you know, uh, you know, magic basically conjuring swords and fighting shit. And you got these weird smiley men. Like, I don't know. It looked completely bad shit. And I'm just like, honestly, this could be kind of fun for, you know, like a 90 minute, pointless diversion but i felt like the first two minutes were just like this guy's a real bad actor i don't know what the hell is going on this is very jarring what the fuck is happening and i felt like it was just kind of poorly shot like beyond the acting it just like i don't know if it was just the quality of what i was watching you know watching through a panel live stream kind of thing but that didn't do anything for me but uh, just the everything else of it was just like yeah well, fine. You know, I mean, maybe it's just morbid curiosity of this fucking walking carcass of a film at this point. But like, 
I still kind of want to see what it is. Well, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna, gonna see it what it theaters. is. Uh, but it uh, it does look. Uh, I don't know. I I. It doesn't look good. But no, I don't I, know. The trailer this is looks, another, this the another trailer VOD looks one crazy. that I would I I would do this in VOD. I'm not going to see it. I'm not going to see this shit in theaters. Like yes, no, no. sorry, not happening. I, all I could say is is that yeah the first the first two minutes looked really, very bad. It looked very poorly acted. It was poorly edited. Uh, hopefully the movie has better pacing than than this trailer did or the first two minutes did because it looked real rough. Yeah. Um, hopefully it's not the first two minutes. It's, I mean, I have that much to say. Hopefully it, it almost felt like it was cut down. Like, yeah. Like, but like a full minute of those two minutes was just the 20th century logo. <laughs> and the Marvel logo and the cre- the opening credits. So I'm just like, oh no, maybe this is just the thing. I don't know. I hope it's yeah. not just the thing. But we'll we'll see. I mean, I mean, it, don't get me wrong. There there's been movies in the past that had poor poorly executed trailers that turned out yeah. to be okay. Um, mm-hmm. I don't. I, I I hope it's the case with this, but I don't think it is. I don't. I don't think we should really bank on that. Um, I don't think we should. So, look, I, 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 anything that I really, I just want to cover it because honestly, we could spend an hour just talking about what the fuck happened with this thing. And I know we've probably talked about it a lot through the evolution of this podcast just existing. Um, but it's such a fascinating thing. I, 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 I want to see the end product. And like, I, I just, I, I got to know at this point. Like, again, not enough to go see it in a theater on August twenty eighth, but like when it becomes practical and viable to do so, I'll watch this. Absolutely. Like I, I of I'm, course, I'm, morbid, you, I'm very morbidly morbid, curious. That's about exactly this. the best way to put it. Morbidly curious. Yes. Because it's, because it's a, a thing that's basically dead. We'll see uh, what happens. That's that. We'll see what happens. Indeed it is. Uh, all right. Uh, the only bit of news news, uh, within this, uh, the boys, the boys, the boys are back in town. Well, they will be back in town very shortly, but they're going to be back in town again, again, uh, because Amazon says, yes, we want three seasons of The Boys at a bare minimum. Uh, Boys is getting a third season. Nice. Uh, Very exciting news. I guess some or most of them will probably survive to see a season three, but we figured figured that'd probably be the case. Um, You're still, I think, probably halfway through. I don't know if you've made progress since we last spoke. Probably not. I think I have. I'm a little bit over halfway now, I think. Okay. So maybe Uh, five in, five in roughly? Yeah, five or six, I think. So I think I'm almost done. Um, And it's still a very compelling show. I really like it 100%. So Yeah. All right. Well, we're going to talk about it when season two does roll around. It'll finish up in October, uh, but it'll start debuting. And September, September 4th is when the, the first three episodes are going to drop. So we'll check back in on the boys, but I'm excited. And I just wanted to throw it out there that we're going to be getting a lot more of it um, beyond what we're getting very soon. So that's cool. Um, now, uh, three more trailers, um, all kind of hitting um, actually kind of somewhat on same similar territory. These are all loosely horror inspired, I guess, or horror adjacent, I would argue. Horror adjacent. Uh, so <laughs> certainly the, the one after this is horror adjacent, I would say. Um, so the first one is Hellstrom. This is a Hulu television show coming October 16th. Um, we talked about this a while back. This is a Marvel TV show. That's and there crazy. Is no mention of Marvel whatsoever in this marketing. So clearly it, it will and so the interesting thing is this was green lighted at the same time that the ghost rider hulu show was green lighted only the ghost rider show wasn't far along enough in production to the point where once kevin feige basically assumed creative control over marvel tv he canned the ghost rider show but i think this show was too far along that he couldn't actually pull the plug on it and so i guess the alternative solution is if you can't just shut it down is just pretend that it doesn't exist and just let it be its own thing because it doesn't feel anything like a Marvel show would feel like, honestly, just from, from the teaser, it's very clearly intended to have horror influences and we don't really get any comic bookie elements immediately. I don't think from this, this TV, this teaser that we saw. Um, so 
putting aside to the fact that this is based off of a Marvel property, because again, it really doesn't feel like that. Um, I, I thought it didn't look half bad. I mean, what'd you think? Was this anything that... No, it looked pretty fucking interesting. I'm pretty excited about it, actually. Yeah, you know, and, and, and I'm sure it'll get weird and supernatural and stuff at points, but um, I thought, you know, this looked... Like, I under, I totally understand, like, this doesn't feel like the same universe as Iron Man and Captain America or anything like that, but... You know, it could potentially take... feel uh, as an extension of the Doctor Strange shit. This very much feels like Doctor Strange stuff. It could feel. It could. It, it's definitely closer to that. Uh, uh, yeah, I would agree with that. But it doesn't feel like it's attempting to be um, really anything that is super in line with anything that Marvel has done. Like, it's this very much feels like a. It doesn't feel like Legion, you know what I mean? Like it doesn't like it has it's a very different feel, but it feel like in, in the way that Legion took a Marvel property and ran with it, this almost feels similar and then the sense that it's just like, look, this is yeah, it's based off a Marvel comic book, but like we're just we're just doing the thing. Like you know, we're not going to worry about tying it in the way the Netflix shows did, the way the Agents of Shield worries about it. Like this is just our own thing. And if, that's you know, cool. We're not we're not we're not going to play ball with the big boys, and the big boys were never going to play ball with us, and that's fine. So yeah, I, I think you know, as kind of looking at it as its own distinct entity, I, I I think it looks cool. You know, um, I don't know if it's going to be good or anything, but uh, it, it looks interesting enough for me that, and that's another one where I'm just like, yeah, I could I could see this being something we cover and and and, and watch with you know and pay a little bit more attention to come October. I'm assuming. Oh no! All episodes premiere October sixteenth. So, wonder where the two where where Ghost Rider and Hellstrom would kind of interweave. You know, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if they were ever intended because they to. felt totally different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and to know. be fair, this feels totally different than than uh, Doctor Strange. But yeah, but the content seems like it could be. It, you, it feels like you could pull from that you know sure yeah um, i think i think i think it definitely it definitely could um but yeah I, I it says uh it, according it, it's to really, the, it's really it, it clean it seems content to do its own thing i guess i would say i don't know but would not cross over with the films and other television series in the franchise in august Loeb revealed that the fear-based series that hulu were being referred collectively referred to as the adventure into fear huh Adventure into fear is what they're calling the things, the scary marvels. Hmm. Apparently. I so I don't know. This is according to the Wikipedia. All right. Well, you know, I'll, I'll take a little adventure into fear on October 16th. A little pre-birthday present for one Andrew Meadows. Ooh. Only a few days before, but close enough. Yeah. Either way, that looks cool. I'm all I'm, yeah. I'm about it. Um, Now, here we have a trailer. Second to last piece of Comic Con news for those keeping keeping score at home. Um, horror adjacent is what I would say about this <laughs> this next one, and, and and adjacent being the keyword there. The Walking Dead World Beyond, uh, the third Walking Dead show, because one wasn't enough, and two certainly wasn't enough. So here comes three. Uh, this is a two season limited event, is what's being described as coming to AMC. Of course, AMC being the the long the the now decades uh, long home of AMC because as we all know the Walking Dead started in 1896 um, and has run every year since then. Oh my God! What is this? What is this TV show that they're making? It looks really bad. So this is this is the Walking Dead CW style, right? Like that is that is absolutely what I got from this trailer of. The Walking Dead with adults wasn't good enough. We tried it twice. <laughs> maybe maybe we did okay, you know, here and there. But you know what the world is really missing is the teenagers version of The Walking Dead. And I just I didn't know I, look, I didn't know what the fuck this was. I had no idea. I knew that they had announced a while back that they were making a third Walking Dead show. I didn't know anything beyond that. Full transparency, I don't care about The Walking Dead. I just can't find it in me to care. Um, and so I'm not even sure that I hate The Walking Dead. I think it's just literally a case of I just flat out don't give a fuck. But this actually kind of intrigues me of just being like, 
oh, someone thought this was a good idea. That is wild. It looks really this bad. Looks horrendous. This is easily. Let me let me do a quick scan of everything that we talked. The about only today. thing you need to look at this this looks worse than Jurassic World Camp Cretaceous. Oh, in absolutely. My uh, and I think it feels like it's appealing to the same audience. I don't, I don't, I don't know what that's about. Uh, I, I don't think it is. I think Camp Cretaceous is, is appealing to the five-year-olds. This is appealing to the the fourteen-year-olds and the fifteen-year-olds. And it's just like, <laughs> like, I don't doubt those people are like watching kids. Those kids are watching, you know, The Walking Dead and Fear the Walking Dead and such. But like, I wouldn't want to watch this like, if I was a kid, though. It looks just like shit. I I don't know. I don't know. Like. I think at least with The Walking Dead and Fear the Walking Dead, it will theoretically cater to audiences of many ages. I don't think your five-year-olds are going to be watching The Walking Dead, but I think when you hit 13, The Walking Dead's probably the coolest thing in the world, and you grow up with it, and that's fine. It's all well and good. Um, this, to me, I think if you're, I think if you're 18 or over, this this loses its appeal. Doesn't it? You know. The only I mean? thing like, I can say is, is look, I want, I want you to, I want you to go to the YouTube's and look at the trailer. And 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 I'm looking at it. Okay, fast forward to two minutes and eleven seconds. Two minutes and eleven. I'm at two minutes and twelve seconds. Coincidentally, so is it the, is uh, it is it the four fonts just the lo- used in the logo treatment? Yeah, I'm looking at the logo. The Walking Dead. Okay, and then you get the four year old World Beyond font. And then you mm-hmm. get a different, a two season limited event font, and then you get this weird ass October fourth, and then you get mm-hmm. the AMC. It's if that doesn't describe the quality of the show, it looks like a terrible video game, like font, like logo treatment. It looks terrible, um, and that kind of summed it up for me. Like it made me throw up in my mouth a little bit when I saw all those fonts in one page. Like it just yeah. I, I just, I don't have kind things to say about any of this. I, I Okay, I'll, I'll throw out one somewhat kind thing. I think there's an interesting concept in the sense that there are people within the Walking Dead universe that will grow up in a world where zombies are the norm. You know, they don't know a life before zombies. I have another interesting thing. And I think that could be. I think that could be interesting. What, what What do you have that could be interesting? Rewind to one minute and nineteen seconds. <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> do you know what that man does? Uh, are we, is this the one with the flies coming out of the? <laughs> he's the one. He's the zombie that the 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 bees or the hornets decide to make nest in his face. And he yes, opens up I his mouth and then you just hit play. Watch what happens right. and. He's, God damn it. So they're, they're flying st- out of his mouth. I see I see them flying out. <laughs> That's interesting to me. How does that happen? Yeah, I don't know. Some weird shit going on. It's some, some weird shit. Here. It's all stupid. This looks very bad. I will not be watching any of this. Uh, you can fast forward to one minute and 36 seconds, and you can see a boy <laughs> with a wrench. He's wheeled like he's got it. It's the size of his head. Yes, it is indeed approximately the size of his head. <laughs> Seems like a real practical weapon. Um, I don't know. The, I don't. It, the whole thing just doesn't settle well with me. Like they are they this taking a, are they taking a pil- are they taking a pilgrimage? Is that the thing? Yeah, I don't know because I they're like, hey, we have know, to be brave, and the boys like leaving his his. Well, his they're in like a school type setting to to begin with, and then clearly there's a shot where they're like exiting like the barricades of where it is and it's just like yeah that seems like a really fucking bad idea you dumb fucking kids <laughs> like and it's just like i don't know i hope i i mean and the girl's like to say but like and then one girl was like yeah this is kind of stupid and the other girl's like yeah but we could be living it's like yeah oh. but we could be dead <laughs> whatever. <laughs> whatever the fucking stupid thing is. oh god anyway I hope all these kids I hope all these kids die by the end of the second season of this and that's why it's a limited series it's to say kids I have... don't be a fucking idiot when there's a global pandemic you keep your ass indoors uh, three days ago Hideo Kojima uh, Kojima yep, yep, yep. yep. Uh, replied in the, the comment himself Metal Gear Solid Death Stranding yep, yep. he uh he put a comment in the comment section of this YouTube video I'm looking at. Here. <laughs> really? Oh, was yeah. it the actual Hideo Koji? Uh, uh, that, that's his name. It, no, says, it must be. It must be the man. There's no says, doubt. <laughs> quote unquote, we could live. Quote unquote, or no, quote unquote, we could die. 
quote unquote, we could live. And then he says, holy shit, that was terrible. <laughs> it's got 155 legs. <laughs> well, now, now, are are you Hideo Kojima? Is that are you telling me something right now? Are you uh, the, are you the de- are you the developer behind Metal Gear Solid? Let's see. It's got he's got one subscriber. Very nice. And 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 no videos. It's probably not him. Probably not. But it has All his right, face we, in the we've, picture. We've, we've said enough on this. I uh, no, we're never watching this. End of story. Uh, last but not least, I think I think I tried to say something that I think that both of us would would agree. Something I will be watching day one. Like something we'll be watching and something we think we'll probably be enjoying. It's a little HBO television show called Lovecraft Country. Talked about it before, but we got a new official trailer, which brought us lots of new footage, lots of interesting developments, lots of things that I didn't quite understand from this trailer, but still make me very excited to watch the television show. Uh debuts august 16th on hbo so you know hbo unfortunately will have to deal with their weekly drops and such but uh, uh only a couple weeks away couple, you know two and a half weeks away roughly um before we can you know experience the, the that first episode um but there's a lot in here that i know i know you liked there was a whole lot in here i liked uh we have the oh so I'm a big fan of um, Lovecraft stuff, Lovecraftian horror, cosmic horror. I know uh, it's been brought to light that H.P. Uh, Lovecraft maybe was not the um, was maybe not the best person in in, in his days. Uh, but, it's true. Um, but he had a he had a vivid imagination in terms of that's right. Fantastical. You, uh, you can't. Such. I mean, I, I don't. I don't know. You know, there's a lot of discussions right now about. You know people's legacies and what they leave behind and 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 all that good stuff. But H.P. Lovecraft, I continue to like the things that he developed in his days, um, and I think it's incredibly awesome that Jordan Peele is taking reign on this project. I can't think of uh, somebody that I would want more to take hold of a Lovecraftian horror thing. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's just unbelievably awesome. I can't think of a better studio to produce a Lovecraftian horror thing. Uh, I can't think of better producers. The whole nine. J.J. Abrams. I'm just excited about the whole fucking project. Um, is um, oh, is what's his face from? Uh, is is Cottonmouth in this? Uh I don't think so. Was that not him? Not as, Who am I thinking? As far as like Cottonmouth. There's somebody that looked kind of like him. Um, I'm not. I don't, I'm not 100 percent sure who uh, I'm talking about. Yeah, I don't well, know. So, so Michael K. Williams plays the dad uh, of of the, the main character. I think. Uh, I don't know if that's who you're thinking of. Uh, Courtney B. Vance is in this. Um, maybe that's who you're thinking of. I don't know. You'd have to you'd have to do a little Google foo on your end to to see if I'll tell you who either I'm of those of. either those ring a bell. But um, I do know. Does have Journey Smollett Bell recently saw as Black Canary and Birds of Prey. Jonathan Majors, who we both recently saw on Defy Bloods uh, over on Netflix, um, and 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 the aforementioned cast there. So I'm not I'm not sure if uh, I'm, I don't I don't know I I, I don't I'm think Herschel is in this. No, at he's all, not. But. He's not in this at all. I don't know who I'm thinking of. Um, all right. But either way, it looks absolutely incredible. Cthulhu pops up at the end of the trailer, which is totally bad shit crazy. Um, mm-hmm. It looks like you portray there's a there's a distinct um, there's a distinct section there in the beginning or the way this trailer is edited, where they're talking about the monsters and like the people and everything else, and it's you know it's it's a very clear racial divide in uh, the southern portion of the United States. I think it's very topical. Um, I think it's awesome that it's a, it's, it's horror. Um, and I just really like the way everything in this trailer is constructed. I'm very excited to start watching the show. Um, yeah, it, it looks super fucking compelling. You know, you, 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 there's a lot of stuff in here. I'm just like, well, I don't know how this all fits together, but that's good. You know, that's what a trailer is supposed to do is just kind of tease you with a few things and not spell things out for you. And I, think there's a lot here to like and i'm very very excited to see how it all comes together and jordan peele jj abrams 
Is it taking place in Louisiana? Is. Like, like it's got. Does it have like voodoo um, vibes? Uh, I can I can see that, but I don't know specifically where it's supposed to take place. Um, Let's see here. I don't know. I don't know. I don't. I don't know exactly if it's uh, a specific location. Maybe we'll find out kind of when the show itself uh, debuts. I, I I I don't know. So, I mean, it's clearly in the south, but beyond that, I'm not sure exactly. Uh, Anyways, it looks fucking cool, place, but man. yes, very cool. Definitely one I think we're going to be watching, um, and hopefully it's something we'll we'll have a chance to cover. I think it's ten episodes. Yeah, I'm just taking a quick look. This is something that will end in October, so you know something we'll be experiencing unfold over um, a couple months. So you know we probably we probably won't really talk about it in too too much depth. Uh, we'll probably talk about it as we watch it, but I think maybe you know if if this ends up being as good as it looks. I think this is one we'll probably want to do an episode on, so we'll probably save some full, full thoughts for when it finishes up in October, but uh, it's very cool. Um, I'm excited it's based about on a, it. It's based on a book, too. Did you know that? It's based, on a, it's based on a book. Yes, I did know that, and I've heard the book is pretty good. Uh, and it's a recent book, 2016, so this is like a quick turnaround from like, oh, this shit's good. Let's make, let's make a fucking show out of this thing. And I feel like that's usually a good sign, too. So, yeah. Yeah. Lots of good, lots of stuff to like here. So anyway, that's uh, San Diego Comic-Con at home. Not the most exciting Comic-Con episode I think we've ever done, but um, uh, it is it is something, you know? And uh, it's, it's, it's a bonus episode of sorts, not a proper bonus episode, of course, but something that uh, neither of us really planned until literally today. today. Um, and so uh, hopefully, hopefully everyone has enjoyed us kind of running through some, some news and stuff. And um, yeah, I think... Uh, I think there's some good stuff on the horizon. Some TV shows we're going to want to catch. Some Bill and Ted movies. Well, yeah, well, yeah, three of them we're going to re-watch, want to rewatch or watch, uh, depending on what they are. New Mutants. Who the hell knows what's going on over there? We'll be skipping The Walking Dead, of course. And uh, yeah, it's a lot of good stuff there. So, um, uh, Comic Con at home. We salute you for for making the effort. Um, we need, we need good news in these desperate times and, uh, you know, we, we, we didn't get what we probably would have gotten in a normal 2020, but this isn't a normal 2020. So, you know, making the best of a bad situation is pretty much the motto, I think for this year, honestly, at this point. So, so, you know, he said, we Abby Lee was in Mad episode, Max Fury we, Road. We, we went, we went back on it. Uh, yes, yes, she was. Mm-hmm. She was the dag. Uh, she was one of the bride brides of immortan joe i don't know if they have a better descriptor than that um but yes yes i agree she was in that it's a fact and that's cool and that is cool uh all right <laughs> uh if you have nothing else to add on san diego comic con i think it's only appropriate to ask you about your vacay vacay you want to know about my vacay sir uh, so oh, yes. uh, I was recruited by the deadliest uh, deadliest catch on Discovery <laughs> Channel, and right. uh, the deadliest catch uh, took an excursion out into the Gulf of Mexico uh, during stormy weather. I'm just joking. I was not recruited by any means. I went on a fishing trip. Uh, first of all, we I, we I, I bought into it hook, line, and sinker. For the record, we went to uh, Dustin, Florida, for a uh, for what is Sarah's entire family just about uh, twenty six people. We we were supposed to go on a cruise <laughs> ship, and we didn't go on. Obviously, we didn't go on a cruise ship. So what we did was is uh, everybody went to Florida because Florida don't give a shit, and you can do whatever you want in Florida. And the entire family rented this. For three or four, it was a three-story house on the beach in Destin. It's this massive house, and um, and we all we all went to Destin, Florida. It was like twenty-seven people in this house. It was it was quite a lot of people. Um, they all come from North Carolina, from Florida, and um, it was a very, 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 very good time. And the whole reason we got together was is uh, um. Some of Sarah's cousins were graduating and they didn't get a proper graduation. So the whole goal of it was at some point to have a pseudo graduate, a cap and gown thing, right? Like a ceremony. Mm -hmm. Uh, So we made a whole trip of it and we went fishing on one of the days. Uh, It was me, Sarah's dad. Um, I sent you a picture. 
Sarah's brother, Sarah's cousins, um, Sarah's uncle, me and Sarah. We went on this trip on Big John's um, charter boat, and we went fishing. Uh, we caught, what is this, one, two, three, uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty fish. We caught twenty fish. Um, one of which weighed 27 pounds. The other one weighed like 24 pounds. And those are the big ones in the middle. You see those? That's a motherfucker of a fish right there. Say 28 pounds that we just said. 27. The biggest one was 27 27 pounds. pounds. So you can look at the second picture I sent you. Logan there. Logan is in the, on the right. Yep. Okay. I see him. His name is Logan. Logan is as big as me. That fish is the size. That fish is 27 pounds and it and it's the size of his entire torso. <laughs> uh, that that fish right there, you'll if you zoom in on the picture, the top right portion of that board behind his arm. Uh, they ended up writing our name or the name of the boat. They write the name of the boat up there. Um, and it was not the biggest fish, but it was only behind it by a pound and four ounces uh, hmm. for the entire season uh, for snapper. That's a red snapper. So we caught some big ass fish. What they would do is, is they would catch this fish. We would, we would catch the fish, and the dude would dehook it and throw it in like a normal size trash, like a trash can, like one that you would drag out for the trash company to pick up. That fish is the size of the trash can, mm-hmm. like the length of the trash can. It was yeah. ridiculous. Never in my life have I ever seen fish that big. Anyways, the seas were so rough. I didn't catch a fish that big. Uh, if you look at that board, I caught the king mackerel, which is like the only weird looking fish. Uh, and then I caught a couple small, small snappers. Um, but the, 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 the waters were so rough. Um, and I was terrified. I'm not a good swimmer. I'm not big on the water. Um, at one point, like the boat's rocking and it's pouring rain and we're out there and you can't hardly see land. Uh, you look out on area that you can't see land at all, and I swear to God, it just it's like I told told Sarah's dad, I was like, uh, I, I feel slightly uncomfortable right now. <laughs> he, mm-hmm. he started laughing. Anyways, the uh, you're trying to catch these fish, and the boats just rock, and there we were in a 44, 40 foot, 44 foot, 45 foot, something like that, foot long boat, a uh, big diesel boat, huge boat, uh, and water was swelling up over the cab of the boat. Like, I mean, it was just really rough. I never, I, I never get motion sickness at all. Um, I spent the entire day throwing up. Like it was just miserable. Wow. Yeah, it was bad. Um, but I did fish a little bit, caught some fish. Uh, we, we, that night we took the fish back. Uh, the guys, they, uh, the charter people cleaned the fish, the whole nine yards, took it back. We blackened it up and threw it on a, uh, threw it on a green egg and grilled it out. Uh, not all of it, just one little thing. We came back with like I have two massive bags of fish, um, I bet. yeah, and uh, but the fish was incredible. It was so good. Um, other things we did, we went to a. Uh, I did. I did. A, did a considerable amount of drinking on that trip. Um, classic vacay. Classic vacay. Uh, it was a good time. We went to an Irish pub. I had an Irish mm-hmm. boxy. Have you ever had an Irish boxy? Can't say that I have. That's a garlic mashed potato that's deep fried. Hmm. Okay. You say, hmm. Sounds good. It's fucking incredible. It's like one of the best things I've ever Sounds had. Um, also, on the flip side of that, I also took my blood pressure. My blood pressure is incredibly high. I'm inc- incredibly unhealthy. Uh, <laughs> I am making a, I'm making a doctor's appointment soon. <laughs> Probably good. Probably good. Probably a <laughs> yes. good thing to do. Sure. Uh I had intentions of reading or starting to read a book. <laughs> you had lofty aspirations that you so blo- uh, boldly proclaimed. Yep, that did. Uh, that I never opened uh, the book pre, once. Pre vacation. Uh, yep. I intend. I had Fair intentions enough. of like laying on the beach with a margarita, reading a book. Never happened. By the time I hit the beach, I was just passed out on the beach. I just laid there. I didn't <laughs> do anything. Um, and uh, that's that's pretty much my trip. I can't really think of anything else we did. We went fishing. We uh we had uh we did I had a very good quote. I can get you want to know my quote I gave at graduation? I, w- I want to know it. Yeah. Okay. The listeners want to know it. The they, listeners they want to know my quote. Okay. Hold on. They just sent me an email in the listeners corner. 
So the uh, while I was throwing up on the trip, uh, there was this. Uh, we couldn't catch all the bait fish we needed for the trip, right? Because we had to go out. We had to catch our own bait fish on um, uh, sudikis or whatever the fuck they're called, and uh, we didn't catch all that we needed. So they pulled out these sardines out of this box, and on the yeah. and I was throwing up off the boat, and I was I was I was coming back in to, to lay down or sit down. And uh, on the bottom of this box, there was this quote about the fury of the wind and setting of the sails uh, that that uh, determines a man's destiny. Um, anyways, it really set in with me, and I tried to look it up for the for the graduation speech, and um, couldn't find it. But what I did find was a quote from Ella Wheeler Wilcox. I don't know who this person is. I just I was scrambling to find the quote and, and, and more or less it says the same thing. She says, uh, one ship drives east and another drives west. Uh with the self same winds that blow, tis the set of the sails and not the gales, which tells us the way to go. Mm. Um it goes on to say, like the winds of the se- seas are the ways of fate as we voyage along through life. Tis the set of a soul that decides its goal and not the claim or the strife. Uh, or not the calm or the strife. I'm sorry. I, I ruined the last part. I just saw the last part tonight. <laughs> I didn't, the, the first part I saw the graduation speech. This part I saw. I see. Um, I see. Okay. Anyways, uh, yeah. And it really, it really, uh, it, it, I thought it was a very good quote. Um, anyways, that's, that's the fitting. It's the advice I gave to the, to the, the young graduates. Um, you know, keep a level head and keep going. And uh, it's a good, you know, it's a, you know, not so long ago we were graduating, you know, and uh, it's a. Uh, yeah, well, it's been a little while, you know, admittedly, but yeah. But how long was, was it really? I mean, what is it in the, in the scheme of life, you know? And, and well, in the scheme of, in the scheme of our lives, it's been some time in the scheme of all lives. It hasn't been. That's it. So long. And how much longer do we have to go? You know, it's it's uh, it's a it's a thing. You know, and when people are experiencing these things, they especially right now. Holy fuck! Could you imagine graduating during Corona and all this yeah, shit? That. Yeah. yeah, I I am I'm I'm continually thankful that I'm in the middle year of law school and like That's it's it. just first year would have been a nightmare dealing with that stress and having a ruined graduation would have been another. It's a, another it's a bad thing tumultuous so I'm just, I'm just, I'm just time, in the middle man. of the ground so absolutely it, yeah you know and so uh for them you know to, hey listen shit works out keep a keep a level head you know and it's uh, it was it was cool to see that i haven't seen that in a long time people graduating and stuff you know and uh just like young adults doing like fixing to like go out on their own it's it's a uh, yeah it's a cool thing either way uh that was the goal of the trip we did it we did it well we partied hard, we ate good, we had a good time as a family, and uh, hopefully no one got sick. Um, I did my best to stay masked. Uh, I did my best to, you know, just try to be aware of current situations. Uh, when we went out to dinner, we would eat separated from everybody else. Um, and, you know, you just you try to be mindful of everything that's going on. Um, sure. And, yeah, um, that's good. Yeah, it was a very good time. Aside from that, uh, I haven't really watched anything. Um, Probably haven't had a whole lot of time otherwise, I would guess. Yeah, that's it. Sarah's been watching this show on uh, Lifetime on the Hulu called uh, Married at First Sight. Uh, it's, it's set in Australia. I've seen a couple episodes right. of it. It's high drama, high reality. Pretty good. Pretty good stuff. Just super high drama. The, a lot of dramatic shit happening. A lot of angry people. I see you've ignored my question, and I will accept that as an answer. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but aside from that, that's uh, that's been a, that's been really about it. What about you, man? I uh, I see the script. It looks like you've you've I got a long list. You've been busy. I got a long list. I have been busy. It hasn't been that long since we've recorded. I guess it's probably been I guess roughly a week and a half because I know we talked about last episode we were doing it on a Sunday, which was unusual for us. This not on a Sunday. Um, yeah, it's um. I, I Anna and I, I guess, really realistically, have been up to a lot. We we um, spent the the weekend together. Just just have done a lot of things, watched a lot of things. There's a couple of things I've been up to on my own, to be fair. Um, but at the top, I finally did it. I finally rewatched Hamilton. 
And God damn it, don't you know it, every single song is stuck in my head again. <laughs> it was just gotten to the point where I was listening to other things and I was happy to go about my my, my, my daily life. And then now I'm at the point where um, I am not throwing away my shut, you know. <laughs> You're just uh, real excited. You know, and, 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 and uh, so, so for this time, because the first time we watched it at Anna's Place, which her TV is a little smaller not a 4K TV. I bought her a sound bar for Christmas last year, so we fixed that part. Um, it's a temporary fix. One day we'll have proper surround sound, but that's a temporary fix and it was much better than her TV speakers, as, as one might imagine. Um, and so that was the first way I experienced Hamilton, but I knew that it was on 4K, Disney+, Plus, and I wanted to watch it with full surround sound at my place, and so that's the way I wanted to watch it the second time. And I started it up on Disney+, Plus, um, and my rear speakers started crackling and cutting in and oh, out. Oh, no. And I was pissed. <laughs> I bet you were. I was pissed. Um, <laughs> You're much like I me. Was, you just can't. It's the only thing you can fucking hear. Oh, God. It, it, it was. <laughs> she could hear it, too. And, like, I, I care more about these sorts of things. You and I care, I'm sure, about these things more than our significant others do. But she noticed it too, and and it, it would have been there was no we, we couldn't have watched it. It was so noticeable, and so I, I raged for a bit, and then I ended up rewiring kind of the, some of the speakers, unplugging them for a little while, and I I honestly I was just like you know what I've had this surround sound system for probably close to a decade, literally they're old as fuck, they're not great, but they're still a five point one setup, and they're better than what I have otherwise, and. I was just not holding my breath. I assumed that they would be broken forever and I'd have to figure out some sort of solution, started it back up. They worked perfectly. And so it was just a wiring issue? So I, I don't know what it was. I don't know. Because I, I did, I like, I was just like, I don't know what I'm doing that's actually going to fix the problem, but something did. I don't know specifically what it did that fixed it, but the good news is was that I fixed it. We watched all two hours and 40 minutes of glorious Hamilton in 4K with surround sound 5.1. No, no Dolby Atmos business or 7.1, you know, we're not at that level yet, but man, it was, uh, it was a revelation. Um, Hamilton is obviously still excellent. And with the benefit of having listened to the soundtrack so many times, you know, the parts where Anna got goosebumps and started to, to cry a little bit. Like I got more emotional when I knew I was going to get emotional. <laughs> I got chills at a few spots and I'm just like, I get it now. Like, I, you know, I'm, I'm not at her level, obviously, but, like, I totally get it. Like, you know, just experiencing it that second time through. And, honestly, it being a few weeks later after having not seen it and listening to the music so often, to go back and see the, the performances again matched to the music was really just, it was, there's, there's a lot of stuff that you miss by just listening to the soundtrack. Oh, absolutely. There's so many nuances to performances, whether it's literally the, the person singing but I think more often it's the people around that person who's sing like you you can't you can't experience what every other character is doing in the scene without watching it. No. And so just seeing it a second time like that was it was a was a honestly just a, an awesome experience. When you and Anna come down, we will watch it. I'm I'm down. I will watch Hamilton anytime. Anytime. Like, and All it's right. it's long, but it flows. Oh, it's, it's so it's, good. And like I don't I mean, I, I, like I t we took a break of the intermission, but like all entirety of act one, it was just like sit straight there and, and, and just watch through. And, and it doesn't feel two, nearly thing, as just, long. Just, just, just go. No, I had no problem. It doesn't, it doesn't feel like a three hour film. It doesn't feel like nearly three hours. It is just wonderfully paced and just hooks you. And the music's so good. And one guy wrote the whole so fucking good. thing. Every and song. And Lin-Manuel Miranda is... A super <laughs> fucking talented dude super Insane. genius insane <laughs> insanely impressive what he managed to do with with that man yeah all inspiring really it is and so so anyway uh, shameless plug go listen to our hamilton episode if you want where anna the experienced hamilton vet at the time talked about her times with it and that was actually andrew, a very very andrew fun and episode. i were it was an extremely fun. We talked about the fucking musical for two hours, almost literally two hours of that episode was dedicated almost exclusively to talking about the show itself. It's a good episode. Yeah, for and sure. And it's one of the highlights of this shitty year, but would have been a highlight in any year, but now it just, just really, really was something else. So Hamilton's great. 
Um, in terms of other movies we've watched, um, these are all sort of rewashes, some more recent than others. The Man from Uncle, she, Anna had never seen it. I had seen it. This is the, the Guy Ritchie flick uh, with Army Henry Hammer Cavill. and Henry Cavill. Yeah, okay. Henry Cavill, yep. Uh, we know uh, Henry Cavill is an American spy. Army Hammer is a Russian spy. They got to team up together and uh, stop nuclear war or stop a nuclear bomb from being fired um, by a by a, uh, a not so good person. It's a super stylish Guy Ritchie flick. I really really liked it when it came out. It made no money whatsoever. It clearly was designed to set up a franchise. It was based off of an old TV show, I think, from the sixties. Um, Anna loved it. She was just like, why the fuck isn't there a sequel for this? And I'm like, well, no one saw it. <laughs> it was just like, you know, we looked at the finance, like it made, it lost, like, I think, I think WB is the one that put it out. They lost millions of dollars on it. And it's oh, just like, man, that yeah. sucks. And it's unfortunate because it really does lend itself to being a, something a that franchise. would be a great franchise. And Henry Cavill and Army Hammer are super charming together. Alicia Vikander's in it. She's wonderful in it. Uh, they they brought Hugh Grant in it to be kind of like the leader of Uncle, and it's just something that's probably never going to get a sequel, but stands on its own as being something that's pretty cool um, and and really really enjoyable and stylish as you would expect from a Guy Ritchie movie. Uh, and and rewatching it probably the first for the first time in a few years, I thought it was really really super enjoyable. So I like that. Highly recommend that to anyone. Uh, we we also watched Tarzan the Disney film. Oh, uh, the old school over cartoon. On Disney Plus, the old school cartoon. Yeah, yeah. Um, I hadn't seen it. Probably animated since. by Tony Hawk, right? And Tony Hawk was like the inspiration for. Yes, because he like Tarzan like surfs in the jungle, like basically <laughs> like he like he. So it's interesting. So they apparently <laughs> developed a three D technology. This is like the first time Disney started to use like three D animation techniques, and so like the Tarzan surfing through the jungle sequences are like mostly three D animation. And they ended up using that for a lot of other future films, um, but they kind of invented it for this f- this particular one. So yeah, 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 it is. And something I don't remember it at all. And obviously, Phil probably Collins. the last time I so the last time I saw this, I would have been a child. And so this is the first time I've seen this since I was a literal child. Phil Collins is narrating this shit in song form, and holy shit, it's awesome! <laughs> I don't remember. I didn't, that. I didn't, I didn't know he was all. narrating the whole movie in song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like well, like like the, like a song plays, but it's like talking about the movie, like as it plays out, and it's fucking cool. <laughs> and Phil Collins is great, and 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 it's a it's a cool it's a cool movie. Like it's a really good, you know, just something that I hadn't seen in honestly probably close to twenty years if I had to guess. Hell yeah, Tarzan was cool. Like Disney Plus, I love that. There's just these old Disney animated flicks up there. Like, I think it's such a cool platform to have those available in one single space. I mean, for us, you know, it's a nostalgia kick because there's so many of these movies that we watched when we were kids and probably loved when we were kids and maybe haven't seen in decades, but to go back and like watch it and like, holy shit, my brain remembers some of these things. Like it's wild. Anyway, Tarzan's really good. Uh, Really, really enjoyed it. Uh, and last but not least, uh, for the first time ever, I watched The Dark Knight in 4K on home video. Uh, Anna wanted to watch it, so oh, we watched it. Dude, I used The Dark Knight to dial in the home surround sound with yeah. the new speakers, with the with where where he um, where he shoots the the jelly gun on the on the building. Yeah, and then yeah. He, and then he opens up his wings. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dude, do you remember seeing that in fucking IMAX? Yes, I do. And so the thing, do you have it in 4K? You have it in 4K, I think, right? I think so. In, I, I think, think so. I I think the Blu-ray did it too, but it really, really shines on the 4K. So it the the home presentation maintains the shifting aspect ratio that yes. the IMAX presentation had. And it's wild because, you know, the regular 4K images look good, but they, they don't look amazing like for 4K. But the IMAX stuff... And 4K is jaw dropping, fucking incredible looking. Yeah, it's insane looking, and you know it makes me wish that the whole movie was shot in IMAX and it wasn't practical to do so or anything like that. But, oh my god, like the whole opening sequence with the the bank heist is in 4K or it's in the IMAX f- format, uh, shot on the IMAX cameras. The stuff you mentioned with the jelly gun and the the sequence that kind of alternates a little bit. 
Um, but there's a couple sequences throughout. I think, I, I think a lot of the, the, the part where he's doing the sonar vision with the eye lenses and like beating the yeah. shit out of the SWAT team, like that's shot in that IMAX format. And it is a, it is insane. Awesome. It is movie. insane how good that looked. And it was a, re- it's, it's a great movie, obviously. Um, yeah. And I, I, probably the last time I saw it was when we did our bonus episode on it, maybe a year, a couple of years ago, whenever that was. Um, must have been 2018. I think that would have been the 10 year anniversary of the Dark Knight. Um, awesome movie. Really fun to revisit. Um, so, so yeah, that's it on the movie train. Um, yeah, we've been watching some good shit recently. I'm probably talking a lot. Sounds like uh, it. It's, TV shows. Uh, I started up Young Justice Outsiders, sticking with the DC thread here. Uh, this is the um, this is the third season of Young Justice. This is the one that like got canceled after the first two seasons, and then DC Universe they revived the show and brought it back. It's an am- animated show about like Teen Titans type things, uh, type type characters like Nightwing and uh, Kid Flash and stuff like that. Um. It's good. It's I'm only three episodes into the, the the third season. I'm enjoying it so far. Um, I, I will look forward to to watching more of it. I really just want to cancel DC Universe because I feel like it's just <laughs> a hole in my wallet at this point. And this has been the only reason that I've continued to have a subscription. And so I'm just like, well, if I finish this, then I can just cancel it. Um, and I'm sure eventually everything will get merged over to HBO Max anyway because DC Universe is a not a great platform especially now um but i do i am keeping it exclusively for this but i think in interest i I think i think in i think in things that are probably more relevant to your interests i have been watching star wars rebels i incidentally finished season one of star wars rebels and i had no idea that i had done it because i didn't i think it was only 16 episodes and i just happened to queue up episode 16 thinking it was a 20 episode season and Lo and behold, some shit one some shit goes down. A certain Clone Wars character uh, pops up and makes herself known. And then I watched the first couple episodes of season two, where Darth Vader is a big presence, and it's holy cool. shit, right? It's fucking cool. It's a cool show, and and I can tell that I'm at the point now where like this is a this is like a point of no return. Like, you know, they spent a lot of time integrating you with, with the crew of the ghosts and getting you, you know, you know, giving you some time to, to get a little bit of a feel for who these people are. But now we're getting into that lore. I think where, you know, you're getting some Vader, you're getting Ahsoka, you're getting the inquisitors. Uh, I got Lando a couple times already. And I'm just like, fuck yes. Fuck yes. More of this, more of this. Yes, please. So I'm very excited to continue my rebels. Um, watch, uh, and I know you're excited vicariously for me to experience the rest of Rebels. Absolutely, so. dude. Uh, and, so sorry and, it took so long. It was worth it. It was worth it, though. Am I right? Oh yes, yeah, yeah. It's I, I, cool. All it's right, really I told cool. You. Um, feels good with the Star Wars. Sorry, you go ahead. I was just saying it was. It feels good to be able to say I told you, bitch. Should have watched a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. <laughs> I do not deny the charge. <laughs> Uh, sticking with the Star Wars theme, I finished. I finished Star Wars Jedi: Fallen Order. I don't think you finished it yet. I want you to finish it before I give you fuller thoughts on it because I would like to talk about the story with you. Fair enough. We will finish this uh, discussion later. I will say it. It it was really satisfactory. Um, I felt like. It wasn't really going anywhere in the middle portion of the game. Like it just felt like gameplay for the sake of gameplay and like dragging the story out. Kind of like where I'm at and right so I, now. Exactly where you're at right now. Okay. And then I think I think there's a certain point where it hits and it feels like it's like, oh, it's building to something now, finally. And once it hits that point, it's damn good. Okay. And so I think That's the probably, whole, probably that's perhaps why third I act of it. I haven't like been picking it up on a regular basis. I mean, gameplay is well, okay, but I haven't felt compelled to. Let me ask you this, just as a side note, I guess. What difficulty have you been playing it on? The hardest. The absolute hardest. Uh, Jedi Knight, I think is. I, I don't know. I think it's just in Jedi Knight, though. Okay, I think there's like story mode. There's Jedi Knight, Jedi Master, and then there's like Jedi Grandmaster or something like that. Is like 
So I did it on Jedi Master, which is the second hardest one. And it was like, if you're experienced with like, you know, third person action games or whatever. And I'm just like, yeah, that's me. I've done this before. And there's a few parts where like it totally kicked my ass, but I felt like it was kind of satisfying to have it on that. Um, But I also think that it prolonged a lot of the gameplay of just like, you know, you fucking get shot by one stormtrooper because you didn't block quite right and you have to restart a whole sequence type thing and there was one boss i ended up fighting for like literally almost two hours in a row because he was a fucker and i was very very happy when i finally beat him um uh i haven't had uh i i can't remember i think i think i chose jedi master i don't, I don't think okay. i chose jedi grand master but i i chose the harder difficulty because i was f- i was adequately yeah, you, you familiar with souls, Dark souls. souls games and stuff like that right. yeah and uh, yeah, I think you've played more of the Souls games than I have. Played like so three, three, three different Souls games. So I mean, yeah. I'm- so I think I, I kind of had to like learn on the fly and get used to that sort of level of difficulty. Um, but I kind of felt like it almost enhanced my enjoyment of the game because I, I enjoyed the challenge of the gameplay. Um, but there were times where I felt like it started to get repetitive, and I'm just like, okay, I get it. And 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 I think both of us kind of played it in pretty segmented have played it, are playing it, I guess in your case, in segmented kind of, you know, sections. Um, but I think, I think, like, once I got back into it, and to be fair, I was committed. I was just like, I'm done with this game. I want to beat it. I want to run through it. But, like, once it actually stuck its hooks into me, it was, like, not a question of just, like, I'm beating it for the sake of beating it. It was the sake of, it, 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 was, a, it was a case of, I'm beating this because I'm really fucking invested and interested in what's happening now. So, I, I, yeah. To, 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 to reiterate, I think the story ends really well. I'm excited to talk about that with you at some point in the future, whenever you do get a chance to wrap it up. Um, very cool stuff that happens in that. A um, little bit of a janky game. Very buggy at times. Yeah. It's a little frustrating in that regard. I wish it had a little bit more time, um, but I, I kind of ended up softening my stance on it by the end because it the story stuff was good enough for me to kind of just be like, fine, whatever. So anyway, um, that's where I'm at with Star Wars. We'll pick up the thread uh, sometime in the future. I started The Last of Us, um, replaying the remastered version. Well, technically, I beat the original PS3 version. I've never actually beaten the PS4 remastered version of it, so that's where I'm at. I'm, I'm only like an hour into the game right now. Prologue still hits hard. Um, I'm sure you know what I'm so talking I, about. So uh, I've only played that. Skip, I've, but I've only played that. I've only played a little. I don't. Th- I think I probably played at least four hours of that game. I played a little bit mm-hmm. of a big portion of it, but a, a small portion of the first one. I remember thinking when it when I played it. I remember thinking the PlayStation froze. I was watching the video. I was watching the, you know like like the action sequences or whatever there in the very beginning, and I thought the PlayStation froze. Oh, what the fuck's wrong with the PlayStation? And then I hit my controller, and then I was actually fucking moving. I'm like, oh my god. You should, this, you is fucking, this is fucking ridiculous. <laughs> it looks so good. Yeah. <laughs> it was amazing. I don't know how that holds up now, but uh, that was my uh, initial impression of The Last of Us I when mean, I played it. For, for for what was a PS3 game, I mean, it, looks, it still looks damn good. I mean, you know, the remastered cleans up a certain, you know, a few certain things, and uh it runs in 4k hdr um so it's you know it looks really good but obviously i'm sure the last of us part two looks significantly better but uh yeah i just wanted to go back and and it's been seven years since that first one came out so it's been basically seven years since i experienced that story and so i wanted to just go back and play through it you know with with this remastered version and then jump into part two so i i I barely scratched the surface with it i'm excited to get a little bit more involved with it um it's an amazing game um and i i remember it fondly from from the time that i did play it back in the day so i'm sure i'll be talking about it on and off on the podcast moving into the future last but not least i know we've been we've been at it for a while uh i started reading some comics no uh, way started reading the new 52 batman run by scott snyder uh and uh art by greg capullo uh, first arc is the court of owls. Anna has pushed me into reading this for the longest time. She says it's amazing. I've actually had a box set collecting volumes one through six, which would probably be like the first roughly 50 issues of this run. And I, so I, so I finally started reading it 
and my trade paperback is fucked up. The pages are falling out of it. I'm very upset about it. Um, but I've been reading it and uh, it's really good. Three issues in so far. Really good. Really, really interesting stuff so far. So I'll withhold further comment until I get to finish this first arc and see where things are going. Um, but it's been the first time I've read comics in a while and I missed it. I will say that. Um, there's just something about reading comics that's just so fundamentally different from novels or nonfiction or anything like that. And it's refreshing. So, uh, so yeah, I'm, some, I'm reading some Batman and I'll probably read some more on my up, uh, upcoming vacation. So yeah. Anyway, that's, that's, uh, that's, that's what I've been up to. Sorry, it's, it was a long, extensive list. Uh, we've been uh, doing a lot of things, apparently, uh, while you've been gone, I guess we could say. So, that's what uh, it sounds like. So, yeah. Uh, anyway, um, I guess that does it for this episode. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this little impromptu episode. Um, I know I've been a little bit wordy, and uh, I blame the alcohol for that, as I as I am I as I want to do. Hey, um, but uh, that's what happens sometimes, my friend. That's what happens sometimes. You so, heard it here thank first. You, <laughs> you heard it here first. Indeed, you did. <laughs> thank you all for listening. Yeah, no, no one has ever explored the effects of alcohol. <laughs> you get a little behavior. wordy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, thank you all for listening. If you enjoyed what you heard, please spread the word. Um, uh, we are on Patreon. Uh, Andrew and I are roughly halfway through our Studio Ghibli 1990s watch. Um, we are going to record on that sometime after I get back from vacation, so expect that in early August. My apologies again for the delay on that. It's many movies, uh, and we've been busy-ish. Um, so... Well, you know, we, we've been kind of self-pacing and not rushing ourselves, admittedly, but uh, I think it'll still make for a very good episode when we do find the time to sit down and talk about it. Uh, so look forward to that. Um, if you want to find any information on us, we have a website. It's called watchreviewrepeat.com. Check us out there. Um, latest episodes, social media links, etc. We're on Twitter. Uh, at WRR pod. If you want to follow us, uh, you can also like us on Facebook by searching for watch review repeat. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, uh, please send those our way to watch review repeat at gmail.com. I did get a, a brief email from one Bruce Brown, uh, chiming in on that old guard episode that we did last week saying great episode. Thanks. And we of course shouted him out for his uh, retirement, uh, admitted it was nice to have the episode be a bit shorter Sorry, we kind of screwed the pooch on this one, uh, and he still needs to watch Hamilton. And so we say, please do that. Uh, so if you want to chime in, tell us what you've been up to. Just, again, anything that you want to say, we are happy to engage. Watch review repeat at gmail.com. Uh, our intro and outro track is Mechanical by uh, Kevin McLeod, licensed under the Creative Commons by Attribution 3.0 license. Now, our next episode is... Technically undecided in terms of what we're going to record on next. We'll have to figure that out. Uh, I think we will actually be taking next week off. Um, realistically, we do have a bonus episode in our back pocket, uh, our COVID-19 pandemic special. And if I find the time, I will try to edit that and maybe try to use that to fill the week. Um, but I make, unfortunately, no promises, given that I will be on vacation. And I hope you will not hold it against me if I don't spend my vacation editing <laughs> podcasts. Um, so we'll see. Um, but that will be one way or another available to everyone uh, as soon as that Ghibli episode comes up. So so at some point in the near future, you guys will be able to listen to that. Maybe it'll be next week. Maybe it'll be sometime you know, in a couple weeks or so. Um, but uh, keep on keeping on. Hope you guys uh, are, st- are continuing to stay safe. And uh, we will catch you on whatever episode we decide to record on next. So until then. Take care now. Bye-bye then. Laters on the Menjay.